Very good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and a lovely day. It's a Saturday, uh, 27th March, uh, 2021. We would have loved to have this as a physical uh, HR conclave, but then seeing you all virtual itself is uh, so satisfying here. Firebird Institute of Research and Management uh, is greatly pleased to organize the 2021 HR conclave on the virtual platform. So this is going to be actually in the next gen uh, skill set for dynamic workplace. And we have a galaxy of no, like uh, the best of the business in the, from the HR fraternity lined up here to give us some fascinating insights that are bound to really uh, be very mind boggling when it comes to this beautiful topic that we've taken today. So these few words, I would love to again give an instruction that uh, let us all have our audio mute and whenever we need to just come inside and interact, we would definitely, there'll be an opportunity. There's a chat box also available and there are people, the IT team also who's ready to offer support. Another thing which I wanted to just mention here is, let us make it highly lively also. There's also a and a session coming up after each session and the moderators also are the best in the business. So the little uh, prayer to the almighty, okay? The greatness of this uh, beautiful mother nature who has given us everything here today. Firebird Institute of uh, Research and Management, International Business School that it is, is creating a lot of ripples when it comes to how management education has to be run. And we are proud to be part of this beautiful family. And for welcoming each, every one of you today, I take great pleasure in welcoming the woman who's inspired everyone, the director of Firebird Institute of Research and Management, Dr. Prema Shankaran, to please come forward and welcome this allied gathering. Thank you. A very good morning. Very happy to see everyone. Um, on behalf of Firebird, I would like to express my gratitude to the presence of panelists, moderators, and participants, and ladies and gentlemen. A very warm welcome to all from Firebird. We indeed hope, hope to have this uh, conclave at Firebird, but due to the pandemic situation, we decided to host online. Today, we have participants across India making this conclave really a truly a meaningful one. At the outset, it gives me immense pleasure to welcome the panelists. We welcome Mr. Charles Godwin, HR leader and public speaker, Zoha Corporation, Mr. Daniel Jacob, Vice President HR, EC Group International, Mr. Y. E. Sridhar, Chairman NIPM Coimbatore Chapter, Mr. Tilak, DGM HR, Larson and Tubro Limited, Joshua David, Managing Manager Recruitment, APAC, Exaware Technologies Limited, Kavita Kartigayan, Senior Manager, HR, Amphenol Technologies, Mr. Shivaraj Ji, University Relation Manager, India, from media.net, Mr. Ramesh Aditya, Head Strategy, Shankar IAS Academy, Mr. Natwal Kadel, Head, IA Planning, Hyundai Motors Limited, Mrs. Nitya Nandini, Principal Performance and Rewards, DXC Technologies, Mrs. Priyadarshini Bharat, Senior Director, HR, Food Hub, and Mrs. Deepa, Project Manager, HR, Foxconn. We wholeheartedly welcome you all to this HR conclave. I also extend our welcome to our Dr. Sundar Raman, the Managing Trustee and Managing Director of Shiva Tekshan, and Mrs. Sujana Abirami, the Trustee of Firebird, to this August gathering. It also gives me a very happy moment to welcome uh, Mr. Vyas, who is the President of Shiva Tekshan. Presently, he is in Australia. He has joined us here. And we are very happy, sir, to welcome you. I welcome all the learned members of faculty and all the participants. And I have only a couple of minutes, whichever I wanted to reflect 
and give the significance of what is this HR conclave is all about. HR conclave aims to address the new age skill set required for our workforce in today's dynamic world with an advent of technological in innovation at the workplace. The conclave brings together business and HR leaders to share their ideas and experiences about skill sets and which strategy can be built to reinvent the role of work pros. <laughs> this panel discussion will support future generations to foster 21st century mindsets and transferable skills. The current generation has the responsibility to provide the opportunity for the next generation to develop the key skills and expertise that students or the employees can use to thrive and advance their careers in the new era of work. Hence, we have initiated from Firebird. We have two themes which will be explained in detail by Mr. Duke, who is the coordinator for this HR conclave. So a brief about it. A next one of the theme is on next gen skill set for dynamic workforce. The panel one will be discussing on this. This discussion is aimed at inspiring future gen to unlock new passions explore potential career paths and learn skills needed for the future working world. The second panel will discuss on the theme next gen skill set for dynamic workplace for companies to thrive in the digital cloud driven economy. The skills of employee must keep uh, pace with advances in technology. Failing to address this gap will leave many people facing an uncertain future. Understanding what makes the workforce and workplace tick will be discussed by the two panelists. Let the panel members get on to the right foot and we can enjoy and produce a harmonious discussion. Once again, I welcome one and all for this HR conclave and greetings from Firebird. Thank you. Thank you very much, madam. It was lovely rendered and uh, really heartwarming indeed. Uh, now uh, it's a time uh, definitely, you know, like uh, to create a beautiful dynamic workplace and uh, for a dynamic workforce and the future generation is all very keen. At this juncture, it's my great pleasure to welcome another visionary who's always there to just uplift the younger generation and who is the role model for a lot of us here. He's none other than our Managing Trustee of Dr. SVK Education Charities, Dr. S.K. Sundar Raman, who will be delivering the presidential address. So I request the IT team to please come forward and uh, enable. Uh, he has been kind enough to give his presidential address in a video format. So over to the IT team. Friends, good morning and Welcome to all participants for this seminar on next-gen skill sets for the workplace. I'm sorry that I'm unable to do this in person. I'm traveling at this point of time. Otherwise, I would have loved to meet you all. But still, on behalf of the entire Firebird family, I take great pleasure in welcoming you all to this seminar. At the outset, let me thank all the distinguished speakers. It has been wonderful having you all on campus directly, addressing this great bunch of people, but we have to make do with the times. Friends, the fact that we tried to have this seminar in a physical mode and then we had to switch to a virtual mode depicts the uncertainty of our times. Uncertainty is something that has become regular with all of us. Over the last one and a half years, all the paradigms, all the beliefs that we had, whatever we thought was the way things would happen, have gone topsy-turvy. Today, India leads the move to get out of this pandemic. 
many of our people have got vaccinated. A young population have ensured that the casualties are very low. And most importantly, our economy seems to have weathered the storm. But while companies have done reasonably well, all reports seems to suggest that individuals have been affected. Employments have been terminated, roles have changed, and even within those who have been lucky enough to hold their roles, the way of doing things have changed. This is a time of a new normal. We are in a situation which we have not seen for more than a century, but this is a game changer. It's not a temporary aberration. At these times, experts getting together to actually debate in depth to create the systems for the future is absolutely important. I think this is a wonderful opportunity for all the participants to hear from the experts and to share their views as well. I wish the seminar a very grand success. Thank you so much. So definitely we need to be futuristic and create the systems in place for the next generation. So that was beautifully put out uh, by our managing trustee, Dr. S.K. Sundar Raman. So next, uh, we need to have uh, you know, the entire theme enumerated for all of us to understand uh, what is in store. So none other than uh, Mr. Duke Mathiel Eliasar, who's the uh, manager placements. So I have great pleasure in welcoming him to deliver the program theme to this elite audience. Over to Mr. Duke. Uh, Right, sir, uh, I'm really very happy to uh, meet you all in this uh, uh, HR conclave. Uh, I'm uh, Professor Duke Magdalena, sir, the manager placement from Firebird Institute of uh, Research and Management. Thank you for the privilege, sir, again. My gratitude to all the panel members of this conclave. Uh, my special uh, uh, gratitude to uh, Charles Godwin sir, uh, Daniel Jacob sir, and uh, Mr. Ramesh Aditya for giving me this opportunity and help me to host this program in a great manner. Thank you. Uh, while workplace uh, disruption is not a new concept, the current pace of change and disruption made possible by the rise of technologies such as uh, artificial intelligence and robotics has brought new challenges to the workplace. And now currently COVID-19 taught us a great lesson over the years. For companies to thrive, uh, thrive in the digital economy, the skills of employees must keep pace with advance, and for advances in the technology too. But many jobs could go unfilled because of this shortage of people with the right technological skills and competitive skills. Only when workplace and workforces needs are met, we can create further economic growth too. With the theme of next gen uh, skill set for dynamic workplace, Firebird Institute HR Conclave 2021 aims to bring together the workplace and workforce into the same platform since both are complementing each other. This conclave will help us to understand the challenging environment in the industry. And through the conclave, Firebird Institute thrives to provide an opportunity to future managers and leaders to take inspirations from industry experts. Firebird family is looking forward the quality interaction uh, with the industry leaders, which will be an enriching experience for the corporate executives, faculty, placement professional and students. Let me explain two things. Uh, uh, workplace, the world new belongs to digital native, it is crucial that employees, employers invest in creating a skilled workforce, not just with the hard skills to do their job, but the career development applied learning and soft skill experience that contribute to an employee's great professional growth. Those generations that commit to this will thrive into the future workforce. I hope this panel one uh, will discuss on this uh, workplace issues and then workforce, it is important to nurture the passion and the confidence of the next generation by supporting professional skill development, encouraging them to have confidence in their ability to succeed 
and pursue their ideas will push them to create better customer experiences and growth into wider community as businesses contribute to society through employment and uh, the introduction of new innovative product and services. Hope this uh, will be discussed by panel two. Uh, the future of work is transforming professional development needs from specialized skills, training, and educational degrees of lifelong learning. We look forward to the views of panel members about the new generation workforce and ensure the young and understand talents, uh, underserved talents are uh, prepared for the working world of the future. Uh, with this, let me conclude. I'm sure that this uh, Conclave 2021 will provide an engaging and exciting platform for the professional practitioners, academicians, and students. Thank you very much. I wish you all the best. Thank you for the panel. Thank you for all the participants. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Duke. That was beautifully put up here. I think it has set the platform for this uh, wonderful uh, virtual HR conclave that we are organizing here from Firebird Institute of Research and Management. Right. Now we are going on, moving on to the uh, panel discussion number one, and the topic for that is the next gen skill set for dynamic workforce. For this, we have none other than Mr. Charles Godwin, who is going to act as the moderator. He is a HR leader, a public speaker. His presence speaks volumes, and he represents the Zoho Corporation. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let us hear it loud or put our hands together. And even in a virtual platform, you can show a you know, like a thumbs up here to invite Mr. Charles Godwin to moderate session number one of this HR Conclave 2021. Over to you, Mr. Charles Godwin. Thank you so much. Very good morning, everyone. It's so nice to be here. And uh, special thanks to the management, Firebird, the HR Lens team, and the entire uh, panel members who are uh, joining this morning uh, and uh, you know a lot of efforts put in you know to have a physical meeting unfortunately and that's the world we live in and you know in tamil they say that's the life we have been living in the last one year my dear friends and uh, you now i have wonderful pan uh, panel members you know for the first uh, topic uh, to focus more on the workforce the talent and uh, so we have uh, Shivaraj from media.net. We have Kavita from Ampinol. We have Joshua David from Hexaver Technologies. Nithin Andani from DXC Technologies joining from Bangalore. Tilak TS LNP joining from Coimbatore. So my dear friends, you know, to just set the context, we will not take much time. It's very, very difficult indeed to connect over a virtual connect and, you know, just being on mute without having our videos on and especially the audience I'm talking about, right? I'm not sure how many of you had your coffee this morning, how many of you had your breakfast, how many of you, you know, took bath this morning and so on. So I just, I'm just going back to March, 2020, the first week of March, my dear friends. Entire world was talking about Corona in December. If I'm not wrong, 2019, our CEO, I know, Bhatmashri Sridhar Bhendi, he said, world is going towards a different direction. My dear friends, my dear leaders of this organization, be prepared to face the unexpected. And he has been warning you know, multiple times. And today, I'm really proud to say that Zoho was one of the organizations before even the Prime Minister's announcement. We were able to be prepared. My dear friends, the best learning I have learned in 2020 or 2019, are we being proactive? Right. As students, as faculty members, as HR professionals, I might say I have 10 years of experience, five years of experience or 30 years of my experience, my dear friends. Now today, the basic need is beyond proactiveness. Am I learning something every day, right? Today I'm you know, uh, with, you know, uh, with one basic, you know, uh, uh, I mean, self-interest, I would say, today I'm here to learn, right? Today I'm, I'm really, you know, happy to have a bunch of about 11 uh, co-speakers, you know, to learn from each other. It's a great platform. Without taking much time, you know, just want to, you know, share one uh, context towards you know, what I've been referring right now. March 20, 2020 on, uh, you know, on a, on a Wednesday, 
uh, if I'm not wrong, yeah, Wednesday afternoon, you know, our CEO announced that, you know, my dear employees go back home. After two days, he said, not just home, go to your native, go to your hometown, right? And, you know, get settled with your internet facility, start working from home, start learning from home and so on. In the last one year, if you look at, so many things have changed. We don't know whether we will have a post COVID, but we have to live with COVID. That's how the world has been moving towards. I'm just going back about 18, 20 years back when I started my journey as an intern. Especially in the IT sector, no, we used to have the training programs for the precious, right? So once they join, you know, I'm a computer science engineer, BE computer science or BTEC IT guy. No, I'll get into the company, uh, a, a software uh, company. I'll be learning what .NET is all about. I'll be learning Java. I'll be learning uh, testing. I'll be learning what, you know, the other basic, you know, uh, programming uh, and needs, you know, which the IT industry looks for. The training goes for roughly about three months to six months. Along with the training, you know, we used to have the soft skills as well, right? We talk about team building, we talk about all the basic soft skills. And today, if you look at day one on your interview, we ensure that a project or an assignment is given to you. Are you ready to take up right from your day one as an intern? Not just as an employee, my dear friends, as part of your curriculum. Now, this is the simple formula you know, I, I, I share with, especially with students. You know, Today, I believe the education should focus on a 50-50 model. 50% what you learn inside your classroom, the other 50% what you learn outside your classroom. You might be doing your observation visit in a central prison. You might be doing an observation visit in a government office, or you might be working in a, or doing an internship in an IT or a manufacturing company, my dear friends. So today, the skills which we have been talking about, now I would like to hear from the you know, different eminent speakers who are available right now along with me. Now, without taking further time, I, I would like to invite uh, Shivaraj, hope he is online. I'm not able to see his video. Yes, Shivaraj from media.net to share his initial thoughts about the next gen skill set. Sure. sure. Uh, so, so thanks, thanks everyone for this uh, uh, for, for this wonderful conclave over here, and a special thanks to Dr. Prema as well for inviting me and could see lovely lot of uh, say great eminent HR folks sitting around here, Charles sir and Natuva sir and a lot, lot of eminent folks over here. So it's a pleasure sharing the dice with them. So so uh, without wasting much of time, I just wanted to, uh, because, because this is a very wide topic and rightly said by a lot of folks over here, uh, it's, it's been a time of a lot of turbulence and certainty. So uh, me coming from a, say, a broad industry, specifically, say, I've worked with companies like Swiggy and Media.net, DirectDive, which is, again, a lot of into broad companies. So I just wanted to probably give a glimpse of, like, what has happened in the, uh, say, product and technology companies' perspective, say. Uh, say, for example, uh, what are we looking at, say, being an early talent acquisition guy and uh, who's visiting a lot of campuses, say, like, starting from your IMs to a lot of tier two, tier three, four town cities, uh, what has happened and what has been changing over uh, uh, these course of time and what's been our expectation changing uh, uh, from these kids uh, or, or even from our employees even at the, even at the top order has been a lot of significant changes. Uh, uh, for instance, I would say, uh, say for example, uh, I've hired, uh, when I was with Swiggy, we hired say close to about some 20 odd folks uh, from ISB for a product managed role. And uh, we did have a, uh, say, a greater immersion role, wherein, uh, though they are a broad product uh, bunch of folks, uh, but we did give them a lot of exposure on, say, uh, uh, areas like sending them into a city, giving them that experience, getting all of those hands-on experience on what has happened. Because everybody, you as a, say, say, a lot of consumers as end user might think Swiggy is just an order, order, order platform, wherein I just order food. And then uh, food is getting delivered, but it's completely a complex structure. Uh, it's it's in uh, uh, it's it's a lot of things happen at back end. Say for example, every day uh, catering till say more than about 10 million orders. It's it's not a joke. Like uh, we have say a bunch of uh, folks who are solving real time problems basically. 
So now, uh, uh, whereas at 2020, a lot of these things were on uh, hands-on uh, uh, for these uh, kids to manage everything and then uh, look at them, uh, have, have an hands-on experience. But now, say, assuming that same, uh, when, when I had an interaction, they have hired again 2021 20, kids and they wanted to do this program. But now, boom, COVID has come. So you will not be able to do all these things. But uh, what are you going to do with them? How are you going to, say, ensure that the same sort of experience and culture is given to these kids? Uh, so uh, here is the first thought which I would like li like to share with all of you folks is uh, I think the first most important thing that we as corporates are looking at or or as an employees and organization standpoint is something like a higher order thinking skill which which we call as HOTS. So uh, what what is HOTS is exactly like uh, somebody who's able to visualize, uh, assuming that say even he might be onto a fraud side or might be on a techie side or might be onto say somebody on a HR side, uh, is he be able to visualize it? Is he be able to go through the business cortex beyond the perspective? Not just looking at, say, like, I'm coming from here, or not just carrying the baggage, but is he able to go through beyond that? So that is something that is becoming very crucial these days. Uh, uh, and and uh, number two, uh, is it's, it's the growth mindset that a lot of these organizations are looking at. So, uh, uh, say, I, I recently we encountered a, say, say, uh, uh, a process wherein uh, there was one guy who was a phenomenal uh, uh, productive guy while he was... At, uh, at an office space and uh, he was absolutely going uh, uh, ruckus post-COVID. And while we were evaluating with him, uh, because, because he's been always an exceptional performer, but while, while we were having a discussion with him, uh, uh, managing stress has become because you have a lot of things to disturb. So his family, his uh, personal uh, issues, and even uh, he was not able to cope up, though he's from a very good institute, but he was not able to cope, cope up. So now even in, in our hiring process, we are now coming up with say something on, uh, can we evaluate their uh, uh, say multitasking ability? Uh, can they uh, uh, be more of independent? How, how uh, growth mindset they've got? So these are some of the softer elements that while we are looking at, while we're interviewing a lot of uh, say uh, early early talent kids as well, and even at the lateral space as well. Uh, so so, uh, put you a, so put it in a, a bunch of basket, I would say like uh, us as corporates, we have started looking at more of uh, as I said to you, like higher order thinking skills. So that is going to be one of the most important critical things that a lot of folks are going to look at it and definitely a growth mindset. And third, uh, uh, communication. Say uh, communication, I, I don't mean like uh, earlier communication is like you, you have a cup of tea, you have a chai break, you have got a chutta break. You do a lot of gossiping session over there with your team, which is which gossiping is also good in a lot of way where it be uh, keep understanding about uh, folks in a better way. But now communication has been absolutely uh, very, very essential. Uh, say, for example, even if you do a smallest of the thing, how do you kind of communicate to the entire organization has become very, very key. So uh, I believe like these are possibly the three uh, uh, important uh, skill sets uh, would, would be required for a dynamic uh, workforce uh, challenge. So that's that's it from my side. All, all on a product uh, firm or a tech firm expectations, basically. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Shivaraj. Yes, you know, we have been, you know, hearing these kind of, you know, basic skills right from our day one of our college, right? And, you know, I just gave an example for an engineering graduate who come into an IT company, right? Today, we are, you know, actually mainly focusing on the MBA guys who come in. Right? Earlier, you know, now we had, op for example, you now for the opportunity for an engineer guy, engineering uh, student or engineer uh, who join the company or appear for an interview, right? Now they will have a bunch of openings in a larger sector. Today, for example, in Zoho or TCS or Kixavet Technologies or Infosys, right? We hire 100 students or 500 students per year, a minimum. Wherein an MBA graduate you now getting into Infosys or getting into Hexabet Technologies info or CTS and so on. A handful of numbers, right? A single digit or a double digit, rarely. So how, as an MBA graduate, you now have to be a differentiator. I would like to invite uh, Kavita from Ampinol you know, to take over and share her uh, initial thoughts. Yeah, good morning. So good morning to one and all. And thank you so much for this opportunity you're given to me. It was really, I was very impressed first this Firebird. It was very catchy name. I think uh, you want to create a fire to all the people. Thanks for this opportunity to us. And I want to introduce myself. This is Kavita. I'm working as a senior HR head in Amphenol. I was here for more than 10 years. 
it was a wonderful experience with amphin also they have given me a great um, experience with a uh, different perspective like with the employee handling ir issues so i was very thankful for the amphin also to given me this opportunity and one more thing i just want to give this platform to give awareness about the corona also please be careful i think uh, this world is now increasing with all lots of cases as being a student i think uh, you know more about uh, the awareness process and safety process not only for you as well as for the family also take care so why i am i want to start about this corona uh, this thing because this makes a very new normal uh, platform to all the industries as well as to the uh, individuals also they have taught more uh, uh, they have given a more lessons to us it created a revolution to all the industries uh, for example i have taken uh, my experiences like uh, before corona we have a different exposure and the culture in the companies and like my manufacturing companies because they all feel that uh, coming to the plant every day and lively uh, putting your presence is the only thing we can grow the industries but this corona after this uh, revolution i think it was created a new normal life uh, giving a new uh, uh, adventure like uh, you can also work with uh, uh, with the work from home options and you can also even the industries like uh, not only the it industry even the manufacturing industry also can grow with uh, uh, through online process as well as through uh, uh, to uh, not with a face to face contacts so because uh, earlier before the culture in a manufacturing sector is not the same it is very compulsory that you have to be face to face have interaction with the employees direct labor productions uh, analyzing the, uh, this is all changed after this corona so this is the new normal life you have started i think this adaptability is very important for the new gens because the skill set is like Uh, new adaptation with the new culture and the new the thought process your creativity and now now the p the p companies or any it is only with they are they are thinking on the thought process only to get the output they are not very keen about your presence or your this thing so this adaptability and the flexibility is very important that you should show your output so it plays a very important role for your performance performance plays very ro- important role and the skill for a uh, new gen to create a Uh, such a way that you can show your performance even without your presence also so this is the major thing we have learned from the corona period i just want to uh, give you one quote name called uh, 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 regarding the skill uh, set uh, we are being judged by a new yardstick not just by uh, how smart we are but how how we handle ourselves and each other this is from the daniel goldman who was given this quote it was very impressive for me for example uh, uh, for the new gen the people who going for a future i think uh, the education is not only enough for the people who are uh, uh, entering into a career now now for as an hr if i go for a, through with a walk through with a different uh, resumes and uh, uh, the different skilled of people uh, it was really uh, the resumes should be very catchy enough in giving your more technical knowledge your additional courses because like for example i think this crowd was combination of an mba groups and uh, you have a b technical groups but everywhere you have to put an additional effort for your different uh, specialized skills to to make your uh, uh, presence in a very different way and you should be in a very attractive way so i, I think you better go for a different technical uh, pa- perspectives and uh, because uh, the person who completed and they will be in a planning of a, okay we will go for a career we will be uh, starting with a new uh, uh, planning or something in any production or somewhere else and you you should not make yourself very constrained uh, only in a particular area always think about in a different way because in china i think after this corona uh, period uh, we come to know that uh, the throughout the world uh, nobody is now trusting with china but but they are very strong enough still now because the way they have a unity they have a very good knowledge in uh, uh, their technical point of view as well as they have a very planning mode in uh, giving the uh, factories in a right uh, transportation uh, shipment and uh, uh, they are giving on time everything is on time that is all the added value for chinese groups as well as they the government in china is they are given a very good uh, Uh, attractive uh, for the other uh, world to get into the factory because that chinese is a very uh, industrial hub they are created a very 
a great uh, uh, opportunity for the world to get into China for a business. One more uh, plus point for the China is that the people are very uh, crowded, they're, they're very high population, as well as the cost. Cost impact in China was very less. The people who get into the business with China was very high margin. So still, after this uh, corona issues also, the, still the people are still uh, uh, under uh, uh, control of China because of these margins, they have uh, attractive margins. That is the major, and uh, uh, especially for Chinese, uh, one more uh, plus point is they have a good uh, uh, skill level. That is a major thing. So think of it that how we can enhance our uh, skill level, as well as what are the uh, important skills we can develop also. Because now, now the uh, important skills for future people like like analytical thinking and innovation is very important, as well as the active learning and la learning strategies, quick learning. I think now the gen generation is always a quick learner, but still do it in an active learning process and complex uh, problem solving. Definitely you will be in a, when you start your career, you will have a different uh, problems, uh, any, any technical problems. So complex problem solving is also more important for uh, enhancing your uh, career and critical thinking and analysis and creative originality and initiatives that is also plays a very important role so leadership and uh, social influences because leadership plays a very important role because once you start your career you are going to be a subordinate then you become a leader so in, in, to enhance your career growth to become a, this thing you have to uh, uh, enhance your leadership quality also so technology use that that's what we are we are into now this new normal mode was improved all the technology like see this is the function we are uh, supposed to be in a face-to-face uh, -face contact function but still now we become uh, uh, virtually so this is all the technology we are going to be adaptive and that uh, monitoring and uh, control systems and technology design and programming we have to be very very uh, uh, advanced and uh, and the re reasoning and problem solving and ideation is also very important for your future uh, leadership skills i think i think before i am i'm taking all these things please guys you have to as a being a general uh, opinion of uh, uh, normal working structure i want you guys have to think about a swot analysis and you think about your strength, your weakness, your opportunity, your threats, and, and dream very bigger. I don't want you guys to put your constraint in working only. Generally, the people who completed the graduation, they think that you have to go for a job, you have to go for a higher position. But not only that is the, uh, uh, that is that should be your aim. Actually, you should make yourself in dream in a higher way, like dream for an entrepreneur, because Every, every Chinese people have developed their small scale industries. The government has influenced the people individually to create the small scale industries. That is the major uh, advantage of Chinese right now to develop supply for throughout the world, many, many products the, from the raw materials to any assembling products, everything they are, because of Chinese, they have developed the small scale industries. Likewise, I think the next gen uh, have to uh, take this opportunity because Definitely after China, we are the leading uh, uh, country for developing all the industrial hubs. As a manufacturing point of view, I think you will be getting a more opportunity in future. So please make use of those opportunity to try to think yourself as an entrepreneur and you make yourself, uh, uh, I, I want you to, uh, from the day one onwards, don't think that you will go to the job, fix to the career, go for a promotion and go for a higher salary. Think from the day one onwards to become an entrepreneur. So you, you should analyze in that way how I can develop, where I should put my effort, where I should learn from uh, uh, other people to become an entrepreneur. So I just want uh, to give that uh, uh, Zoho. Zoho is a very good example for a, a good entrepreneur. I think Charles Boss, uh, Mr. Sridhar uh, uh, was a very good uh, entrepreneur who's developed this Zoho. He, he never think in such a way that I should work in a company, I should care, grow in my career only to this position. He think in a higher dream, stating that I should become an entrepreneur and should, should give a business for the other people. I should give a job for the other people. So in that way, I want this young generation take this as an opportunity and create your uh, process in that way, like to become an entrepreneur. So this is my... Uh, this is my humble advice as uh, as for a, a younger generation. Don't think it in a very constrained manner. Think in high dreams. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, uh, Kavita.
uh, thank you so much for your big big uh, list of uh, you know uh, skills which you have highlighted maybe before you leave uh, kavita you know i would like to have you on video if possible you know i would like to have uh, one or two questions you know uh, to you because i've been you know closely watching meaning i've been observing uh, in all the social media platforms you know right from march 2020 till march 2021 being a woman right in a in a factory now how did you handle in spite of your family your kids uh, right and uh, how did you dealt with this pandemic season during the initial stage especially with the young gen who are in your organization uh, i would like to say that it's a very great uh, uh, experience in my company because my boss has given me a full independent and he has given me lots of support to handle this issue because uh, during march 24th we have uh, come with the lockdown and uh, in, immediately my boss called me and he was just requesting me what can we do because i have to run the factory uh, and we just look into a different uh, gos which was announced in a different mode and stating that uh, telecom becomes an essential so it was really challenging for me that i have to run the factory with this situation because it's a very pandemic situation the people are very panic during those times and to come into the factory is not an easy job uh, i have to start my factory by april 3rd so this is my deadline from 24th to 3rd i have to run behind different government officials to run the factory because they are not giving an a, a, a permission to start the factory but finally one geo was released that telecom is an essential uh, uh, factor that you can start the factory but with all the safety norms it was really challenging because uh, uh, until if you are not get the approval also you can say you can close the company but running the factory is really a challenge once i started i want to start go further with april 3rd it was like why how i can do this process because i have to make all the people to be attention in the factory and i have to make all the staffs to coordinate to come for the factory and we are all in a different place it is like the transportation like canteen foods and convincing not only the employee and even also the family members it was a very challenging so we started the process we are just call, called each person individually we just make first convince the family you just uh, give a faith uh we will trust us we will we will we will take care of all the safety norms so then uh we were collecting all the sops from the government how to run the factory in a safe mode so it was really thankful for the management also who has given me that because it is really expensive to make all the safety norms immediately without any business so that is also a challenge for us so convincing the family as well as to the employees it was everything done in a very smooth way only because of the adaptability to the new change we we want to make the people to understand to adaptability to the new change so this makes a great changes to the factory itself now till now i i was very surprised that we have only 17 corona cases and so far we are very safe with uh, uh, 0% of uh, corona issues okay uh, kavita you now a quick simple uh, question now during the tough time especially in march or april 2020 how did you handle your young workforce in your company the freshers who would have joined or the juniors who have been with the organization for a month or a year or two years right you can share uh, you know, that yes yes because this uh, young generation i think uh, i feel very comfortable with the young generations to make them to aware actually what happened uh, we started giving an awareness session every day in the phone uh then finally we come to know that okay every day to, towards the people creating an awareness is not easy so we started an announcement system making everybody to share their experience so making them clear about what they experience in what way we can make me uh, safe and how to make the company also safe i think this awareness session created the young people to understand the scenario and they are also trusted the management that we will take in a different uh, uh, mode as well as in a safety mode so what we did we 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 travel to all the people in a uh, wherever they stay like in a rooms or they were staying in a house we started visiting their house we we try to talk to them that hr people were done a great job during those times because my team taken a more effort during that time so we started going each house and trying to explain about this 
and making the convincing not only with the family as well as to the employee also i think this young generation of very very uh, understandable and flexible and they are uh, uh, they are ready to accept the reality thank you thank you thanks for your thoughts sir kavita thank you next you now uh, i would like to have a different perspective uh, you know uh, from a very you know uh, uh, dynamic person you know he has been handling you know uh, not just india i mean he key focuses towards the different geographies and especially in the apac uh, region and uh, now uh, over to joshua joshua a quick question maybe from there you can take it forward now how did you handle you know uh, this time you know especially during this covid time and what exactly the industry is looking for from the global perspective from the apac perspective ellarkum uh, vanakkam thank you for the thank you management for the invite uh, Uh, thank you charles brother uh, for the that quick introduction as well okay to quickly talk about um, let me uh, say what kavita was talking about the first point which is adaptability uh, it is global or it is going to be india or it is going to be chennai or it is going to be wherever we are staying the employees and the management were very very adaptable to the situation uh we were coping up in the working hours in different geographies how on the employees per se and what is that to be learned across the globe that was the major pitch which we really did uh charge if you to answer that question okay a uh, lot of people were questioning how are we going to work and obviously this virtual modes uh really helped us because uh, nobody nobody in this world thought maybe working from home is going to be a day in a month or maybe in a year uh, sabbatical is something different but uh, working throughout the year is for the new normal which we all experiencing and we will experience for some time uh, from now as such so if you talk about singaporeans if you talk about australia new zealand if you talk about malaysians or the middle east people they were so adaptive they just took the job in their hands and everybody were virtually connected uh, both the uh, uh, millennials and the experienced people so taking the workforce to the next level hiring them talking to the panels on interviews this virtual mode and the adaptability really made a difference now if you talk about uh, uh, the the I, i i have an experience of handling talent acquisition for close to 16 odd years in various uh, um it companies starting from hcl to xr today uh, what we really see in the new gen let us not forget the academics let us not forget the fundamentals let us not forget the foundation as such because we are talking about latest technologies we are talking about ais of the world machine learning uh, so on so forth but are we degrading what we are doing call the academics what we are studying what we wanted to do in our two years of our mba today the first question i always ask in any arena i address is how many subject names do you really know in your four year engineering or your two year mba classes i see there are 5 to 10% of the people raising their hands for it which is an alarm to all the hr folks doing interviews in the colleges where we go for i'm not blaming here and i'm not the one to blame as such all right so are we in the right place are we in the talking about right next gen talking about the latest technologies are we forgetting the past and what is the fund foundation and the fundamentals needed for right so when we went for hiring there are two three things which the next gen has to definitely uh, uh, have in their resumes or have in their minds to set aside i you very very rightly said we go to an engineering college we collect at least 100 500 even 2000 folks when we when i was working for cognizant and uh, you know the story what we do in srms of the vats of the world but do we hire the same numbers as mbas to the companies what we hire for which the question is no right let me put the first question we talk about emotional intelligence we talk about uh, intelligence we talk about uh, uh, emotional we talk about intelligence quotient but are we talking about something called a gentle awareness today as a 
student are we are we asking questions uh, friends let me tell you one year did we think we will sit from home see the small screen called mobile and learn for the entire one year of our studies right that is a new normal which you are talking about are we disciplined and determined for this one year to know the latest subjects of our choice did we really listen to our faculty members sitting in front of the small screen called mobile did we learn what is needed at the end of the day right if you are not understanding the basics my friends there is no mean we talking about the next because today we talk about we were talking about as charles brother talked about java.net then we were talking about smsc social mobility analytics and cloud and today we are talking about artificial intelligence uh, machine learning deep learning robotics and so on and so forth but the so called six the so called foundation is still the same we have the four years eight semesters education still in our place all right let's us concentrate on it if we are diligent enough to understand that we are ready for the next gen we are ready for the latest technologies there a lot of people as lot of mba graduates asked us so what is a certification can i do today my only question answer to them is be very strong in your subjects and later point in your time you will be deliberate enough to understand your certification you will know what is a problem solving what is a leadership because today linkedin or the microsoft or the amazon of the world is giving you a lot of certifications let us choose one knowing your strength and understand and do it all right the next most important is the self awareness okay general awareness is this and what is self awareness understand your motivation behind whatever you do how many people in the zarina are sitting and doing mba because of force because of passion because my father wanted me to do this mba i can i can vouch you that half of the population say sir na vare edo padikiren edo poren sir okay let us stop that today my friends because the competition in today's world is enormous for one position of mba fresher you know how many people apply just open the linkedin if you are there in linkedin even charles bro or kavita ma'am or the shivaraj brother who spoken can vouch for this there will be close to 200 to 300 applications for it so my dear friends how of our digital footprint is there is most important and we are not blaming you shouldn't be in facebook you shouldn't play pubg we shouldn't play you shouldn't be in twitter but what are we doing in linkedin and what are the areas we are talking about how many people are getting in touch with uh, a, a person called a network from hyundai how many people are talking to uh, tilak of lnt how many people are talking to charles brother of uh, zogo how many people are talking to daniel brother of ec corporation if you do this i am telling you you will be a winner it doesn't mean that you should also speak you should also think out of the box and take to your candidate to the next level please evaluate your time and priorities these are the very 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 simple steps my friends which will give you a major difference in your career all right so again i'm telling you uh, sir i we need to talk about team work we need to talk about leadership skills we need to talk about collaboration we should talk about uh, uh, problem solving if you do this basics properly i think all this will come to our place right all the 16 years what we been doing we been learning learning and learning charles very very rightly told we are here as brothers and sisters as as um, uh, leaders in this industry we are all there to learn at this point in time so my dear students please learn daily learn learning should never stop in your life and in your career all right so the last most important thing is after general awareness after self awareness what is the critical observation you should do these are the three pointers where lots have told to a extent uh, students are lacking so that's the reason i just took this three pointers when we have a larger broader perspective of people going to talk about in today's session now what is critical observation uh, a big picture into the into the place 
Uh, you, you, you talk about you study personal management. Now, what is personal management? What is going to do? What is COVID to do with personal management? What is the pandemic has done in personal management? Connect everything and learn. Okay, be an active listener. If you're going to be an active listener, you will be a very good critic in your life. You will give a lot of good essence to the people who are coming to you in terms of getting uh, lessons from you. And the last most important thing is get the feedback, feedback and feedback where you are in at the end of the day. Right? But by this, I, I think I made my point. So over to you, Charles. Thanks, uh, thanks, uh, Joshua. So many things you know you have mentioned, especially the three highlights. Personally, I am taking it. You know, uh, my dear friends, you know, I mean, Arni and Jamar Sultan, set your foundation strong. Be strong on your fundamentals. Be strong on your foundation. Today, you know, whatever the technology has been built, you know, with Java, not just with Python or not just with you know uh, AI and ML, which we are talking about. So. As he said, certifications. Now, if you are not strong on your foundation, which are derived by the respective institute, right? It's very, very difficult. Or it, I don't see a purpose of doing an additional certification, right? Just adding certification after certification into our profile. The second thing he mentioned about, I take it this way, self-learning. Life and I, I strongly believe, right? Of course, as he said, once you set your foundation, what you learn inside your classroom, outside your classroom, you now, which he has been mentioning about, have thirst for learning, have hunger for learning. Thank you so much, uh, Joshua, for your insights. Uh, let me come back to you for further questions in a short while. I would like to welcome uh, Nitya I know, uh, uh, from BHC Technologies, Bangalore, and a uh, no, very interesting company, which I you know I used to admire because Today, even during this tough time in 2020 or 2019, my dear friends now who are listening, now go and check their, you know, uh, the number of precious hiring in the last two years, a mass, mass crowd. So we have been talking about many skills. Now, a very important topic or a question thought, which I would like to give it to uh, Nithyanandini. Uh, Nithyanandini heads the performance and rewards. Uh, Nithyanandini, you know, what are the skills you look at? And especially, how do you evaluate young workforce performance. With that, maybe you can share your additional thoughts as well. Thank you so much, Charles. Uh, can you hear me loud and clear? Yeah, okay. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, just a correction, I don't head performance and rewards. Uh, you know, we are a very large organization. So even for performance and rewards, we are 50 plus members across the uh, across the globe. So um, I am in the team and I lead projects for transformation within performance and rewards. So um, your question around how do we groom youngsters? So considering COVID, let me give a little bit of the company context. Uh, as you rightly said, when the world was uh, going, uh, you know, had realized that there is a crisis and, you know, uh, we're looking at, oh God, how do I go to office anymore? I think DXC technology was going in the opposite direction because we've been having transformation uh, within our organization since the last four years. So, um, as you know, DXC technology was an amalgamation of HP and CSC. We got merged in 2017. So we've been in constant flux since then. And for us, when COVID uh, struck the world, it, it didn't impact us so much as it would have impacted a services organization because uh, we are an IT company and we are pretty much... Um, you know, working virtually for us, going to office was an option. Of course, going meeting colleagues, working within the team was, uh, you know, it was always a part of the job. But I think um, with the change in the leadership team in 2019 and correctly when the COVID came in, um, it was a very golden moment for us to transform. And we had a very dynamic leader who joined in as the head of HR India. And uh, he, uh, he brought in a lot of change, which aligned also with the global uh, changes. And uh, you would see that uh, reflecting in our mass recruitment, mass hiring, as well as, uh, you know, internally in the company, employee experience has changed. How do you use technology for making 
the employee's life better who's sitting at home who's sitting in front of a laptop for 8 10 hours and um, how do you communicate and give them an employee experience and also for uh, freshers and when freshers join in the organization uh we definitely have a challenge in um, you know we can't meet them face to face and uh, have induction orientation but everything is completely gone online which means as an organization our it has taken a forefront in terms of keeping infrastructure at its top notch and also um, hr has taken a very important space because uh, today's in today's world employee experience is very important so how do i give the same consistent experience to an employee who is sitting in um, you know one corner of brazil versus uh, you know a coimbatore versus an island in indonesia how does the organization give the experience to an employee and i think um, you know when i look at the skills required for uh, the next generation workforce this should be the basic foundation how do you give employee experience uh, consistently and how do i use technology processes and policies and align all of this around this so personally what we have done is uh, you know how do i use my mobile like if i'm traveling you can't expect me to sit in the same location for 8 hours i could be today in coimbatore uh, maybe i want to go to my hometown so the company has also come up with innovative practices so we got a mail a few months ago saying that uh, you know there is a period of time where you can go to office pick up your office furniture or your um, te- technology accessories and for um, you know like all of us are very um, sensitive and uh, attached to small small things in the office like i want my pillow which i used to leave in office and then one fine day office shut down right like march 2020 said don't come to office from tomorrow so they said come to office pick up your uh, you know if you want a big monitor because you have working on multiple screens come and pick it up if you want a chair your own chair come and pick it up so the you know the hr team wrote to us saying that you can come to office during this month and of course follow all the norms right to the security saying that you'll be coming get a gate pass come and take uh, you know all your wear your mask and register everything so this was something which is a very small thing but also use of assets what are we doing with company assets for one year right i might as well give it back to an employee and the employee also uses it the employee feels a sense of belonging and the employee has a good experience and the employee um, is engaged in the workplace because today the workplace is my kitchen or it could be a garden or it could be some other part of my house so how do i still give the consistent employee experience so if i have to tell youngsters who are coming into the job try to explore what technology can enhance employee experience can you use artificial intelligence can you use robotics come up with ideas which can fusion um, which can have a fusion with other industries other technologies how can i use facebook for work how can i use linkedin so marry all these things and definitely look at change management as human beings all of us resist change so in the workplace it becomes even more challenging right how do i work in a team and how do i make sure that everybody in the team is on the same page when i'm trying to say just one sentence everyone can understand it in a different way so how do i communicate and how do i do change management that is uh, another skill which you can learn change management is a very very um, uh you know like undervalued skill but it is becoming very important because it's a very critical part of project management and as you said charles there are uh, you know like like how java is the foundation and it is always going to be in fashion like that you have project management skills you would always require project management skills how do you build gantt charts how do you monitor and uh, you know have a weekly cadence if you are strong in that i don't think um, you know uh, you need to build anything else so there are a laundry list of so many certifications and so many things that you can do within hr and how do you build on um, you know those skills 
you necessarily uh, like how mr joshua said build your foundation but some of us need a lot of time to find what our strengths are right we are all not on the same page in terms of finding out that oh i'm good at this let me focus on this as a fresher you probably don't know anything you're just doing mba because somebody else told you that mba is super cool or maybe your parents told you that you have to do an m management then only i will uh, buy you this or i will do this for you so it's always like a give and take thing but at the end of the day you need to uh, you know be open to whatever is coming in terms of learning so that brings me to my favorite topic at the individual level learnability should be your most important skill you don't have to say that oh i have 10 certifications um, you know i will work only on those things which align to my certification when you come into a workplace as a fresher remember you are one among the drops of the ocean and everybody is there trying to prove that they they are valued in the workplace and all of them need to align to where the business is going right so unless you learn everything you're not going to be able to um, you know prove that you have the skills and learnability is a very very important skill how you learn and how importantly you unlearn so how importantly you unlearn is more important than how well you learn and i would uh, use the example of a sponge how you absorb like a sponge and how you blend in right uh, if you're working and and in today's world in the virtual world you work across locations time zones and your teams could be very very diverse how do you interact with a colleague who is asian how you interact with a colleague who is europe from the europe time zone from the uh, you know the west time zone how do you learn to communicate with them that's very very important uh, i can tell you for a fact that in organizations even today written communication is a big challenge very very big challenge even at senior management level it's very funny but even at senior management level to write an email you get it drafted and then it goes through like 48 hours of review, reviews and then finally you send out the mail so if you say that you know um i don't know and a tere other i don't know what i'm good at but you know what i'm good at writing emails i'm good at english focus on that build on that so right focusing on your learnability and your communication is very important and of course be very very humble i think uh, i'm going into the individual level but the more you're humble i think the more you can absorb the more you can learn you can always say that oh i am from iim i am an mba i will not do this data entry work why don't you get another uh, mba person or get an engineer to do it or get a you know like a bsc to do it no and you will be tested on how well you are volunteering for work and how you're delivering on the work nobody cares if you are from iit or iim people care about how you are learning the skill and how humble you are and how adaptable you are um a little example i want to leave you with in my own first job um i joined uh, the consulting world so i would i joined as a hr consultant in mafa which used to have a consulting division long long ago and um, you know how consultants are right like so i had joined in as a management trainee and consultants are like okay wearing very fancy clothes going for client meetings and um, i will not do any um, uh, you what do i say data entry work or i will not do anything menial i will only go stand in front of a customer make presentations and talk about it so that was the typical understanding of what a consulting uh, business was so when i joined as a consultant so people from the other departments used to assume that i am also like this oh she's from consulting da she has attitude that was the lunch time conversation i used to hear okay and uh, we had a colleague from sales a senior colleague who had um, passed the same comment when i was there right next to him and i said um, why are you saying this because i have just joined the job maybe my other colleagues are like this but that doesn't mean i am like this then he said okay fine 
uh, you would rather be a consultant and do nothing than do some small work which will help the company i said no false that is not right you give me any work i will do it then he said are you sure because uh, your consulting hat will uh, get hurt the ego of your consulting hat will get hurt so i said no it's okay please give me the work and he gave me three boxes of business cards okay he gave me three boxes of business cards and he said uh, digitize this first thing i was like what do you mean by digitize and he said no make an excel sheet whatever is there on the business card you have to type it and organize it for me because i am a sales person i don't have time to digitize this i said fine <laughs> let me do it so i took 3 days day and night i typed the whole three business cards boxes and gave it to him and his uh, i mean he was like i completely changed my opinion consultants are not all snobs because um, this is the first time i'm seeing somebody who is able to learn and after that he took me to a client meeting where he was selling to a customer and i was the first one among the management trainees to get that opportunity so what i'm trying to say is you may think that being humble will not take me anywhere but it will take you probably at a slower pace but it will definitely take you towards success so with that i pass it back to charles thank you thank you uh, nitin and anthony i know that this very very powerful in the you know uh, stay humble now you might hold a position of uh, a marketing a vp or a hr vice president or head hr or sales head and so on my dear friends if you are uh, i mean if you are not grounded right it's very very difficult to be successful i think somebody is on unmute uh, now could you please help us in muting your mic thank you thank you so stay grounded and that's one of the very very basic essential skill now required for a management training for management without further delay now i would like to welcome uh, tilak ts from the lnt uh, group and uh, over to tilak and i would like to hear from you lnt the large large one of the largest organization in our country in having different wings across industry i know we would like to listen to your talk thank you very much charles uh, for uh... calling me and very thankful to firebird institute of management to give this opportunity uh, without taking much time i will get into uh, discussion generally i will start whenever i go to colleges i will start with this quote guru brahma guru vishnu guru devo maheshwara guru shashat para brahmam tasmay sri guruve namaha because there are gurus are there so we have to respect before start any conversation that's the idea like if you look at uh, this uh, the various discussion has happened so uh, my thing will be repetitive so i like to avoid that life is full of challenges and opportunities everyone knows this this pandemic situation which lens you are using that is very very important you are looking at the situation as an opportunity or situation as a challenge to start with we are all looking at as a challenge but over the period there are a lot of new innovation come into picture ideas come into pictures so we started looking at opportunities in this covid situation that is the one good thing i could really experience in this covid period that i can say i will little deviate from this covid situation for uh, because students are here it is a very vast topic about to talk about the next jet generation skill set it is not we are not discussing about that organization but we are looking at a generation itself in a dynamic work situation so what i want to students or newcomers in the industries needs to look at you have to look at the industries first how the industries even you can adopt this uh, all the industry life cycle model which industry in the starting stage which industry in the growth stage which industry in the maturity stage which industry in a decline stage if given an example if a decline stage we all know being at coimbatore it's a textile industry at decline stage no one like to study technology technology now and if you look at that maturity stage it is later maturity if you look at automobile industries and other industries now this it industries are going towards that it's a maturity levels 
and growth stage yes e com and other industries are coming into picture this starting starting stage there are lot of multiple industries are coming maybe they group into one uh, uh, one uh, group but it's uh, from that it is some deviation is coming up like if you look at manufacturing industry under manufacturing industry lot of industry will come being a defense industry it is a kind of starting stage because slowly that uh, process are opening up governments are opening up so we ha you have to look at in a general aspect don't look at is a it and non it being a non it person i have to tell that because generally people are going ahead with the two uh, differentiation and then looking at it's a bunch of so don't look at that manner you look at which industry is coming up which industry in a starting stage don't getting into declining industry getting into matured industry or growth industry aspect or startup industries you identified and understand the skills are required for this industry for startup stage i will explain about this uh, defense industry defense industry is a very new to uh, india if you look at other uh, countries defense industry some of it is in a mature stage so if you i want to get some technical expert i have to depend on other than india that that skill set is not available in india but we are slowly grooming the people we are slowly developing the people through this technology transfers we are developing all this uh, skill sets so that's why uh, the people has to look at the skill set if i come to skill set in a broad sense you can split into homogeneous skill set and heterogeneous skill set in a technical aspect in the heterogeneous skill set you can dovetail into what is the important skill set in the market is required if you getting into this heterogeneous skill set and then which is going to rule next 5 years or 10 years then you can focus on your technical aspect that will give a great mileage to you your organization at large society that is one thing i have to communicate to the student because generally two aspect is there actually if you look at t uh, generally all hr people say that this is vertical is more on your uh, technical skills that horizontal is more on your uh, uh, this behavioral skills so people our uh, colleagues are talk about many skills related to horizontal and as well as vertical so yeah, yes as students you have to be very 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 careful on choosing a skill set on choosing a technical skill set number 1 and same way the technical skill set will help you in a certain level if you become a technically expert in a particular organization or particular uh, field it will go up to 10 years 10 years down the line your grade will change your play area will change you will become a manager or senior manager time your behavioral skills more into play so as you have to develop both technical and managerial skill set that is number 2 to put it in a very simple manner what kind of skills we supposed to develop i generally use this 3d concept nothing but 3d is one is dream discipline and develop very simple language i can say be a selfish be a adamant and be a foolish why be a selfish yes whatever the goal you choose another very important thing the people will most people will getting into one industry most people will getting into one area so then homogeneous skill set will get developed so their your contribution will go down so you have to understand your purpose of the your dream or your purpose is matching with whatever the skill you want to develop that is very important uh, yes uh, my uh, uh, colleague is mentioned about that uh, swat analysis and other johari window whatever the tools are available you can use it understand yourself better Uh, realize yourself better and getting into your dreams aspect uh, that is another important and be adamant once you taken a one discipline or one uh, deter determine completely your routine is more than important than your uh, bunch of activities so getting into routine if you want to develop something getting into routine actually people are also talking about the social intelligence skill is coming up very uh, advancedly because we are all connected with uh, virtual and we are all we are hardly connected with the uh, 
the thing is going like this because this particular event is planned we are very much excited to meet each other but unfortunately now we are meeting in a virtual mode so it is social and intelligent skill and a digitization skill it is kind of need of the hour we supposed to develop we have to develop and another thing it's a develop what kind of development cycle you are going to do it is more on continuous learning it's all organization coming up doing a continuous learning if you uh, some many researchers are saying if you good at if you practice 100 10000 hours in a particular skill you will be master in the skill so getting into deep is very very important i find the students are teaching many areas or they are not good at in a one particular skills so getting into take few skills the skills i am not going to talk about because there are lot of skills throw at you please capture all the skills choose whatever the skill you want to develop getting into deep getting into deep getting into deep so then you develop that is what it is importantly i thought of communicating to this uh, event thank you very much charles and another important thing before i close all are talking about this pandemic situation this is completely different from it from uh, manufacturing sector actually we were very uh, busy at doing uh, connecting computers and doing the job and suddenly my boss called and say even a single net tightened in our shop floor nothing going to happen whatever you are busy at whatever you are doing a great job at your home so we have clearly planned out plan to pull the all the people inside the shop floor and then start working that is the biggest challenging we undergo yes one uh, uh, person is rightly mentioned about this adaptability it is automatically come into this picture actually people are very adaptive it is he comes to know when the pandemic comes so that is the one thing we we like to appreciate uh, this generation for uh, this particular skill thank you very much charles over to you thanks thanks tilak thanks for covering up the many aspects and uh, Uh, again you know uh, reiterating on setting your foundation deeper deeper and deeper thank you so much for your thoughts uh, tilak uh, i would like to invite all the panel members uh, to be online visible over video if possible and you know, i'd like to have just couple of questions you know, uh, you know based on your thoughts you now i'd like to explore you now maybe for the next five to seven minutes let's explore now uh, from students mind now what they are looking at so today you know as an mba graduate you now what is the differentiator and uh, you know nitya nathani was highlighting about iim or iit you know whichever institute you belong to or whichever the brand image you carry my dear friends now what is that you as an individual what is charles as the differentiator what is says joshua as the differentiator right and you as a brand you know how do you differentiate just to share you know one of the thought and you know uh, to and and pass on the question you know to the panel members today we have been talking about you now uh, uh, till uh, before covid you now we have been uh, visiting you know various institutes for placements you now we have been looking on different skills we hire them and today many organizations if i am not wrong majority especially in our organization as well we want to give equal opportunity for anybody you know across the state across the country across the world right for example i am in the remote village in namakkal i have an internet access i am from a small village and from a small college from a small b school or whatever you call it as from that village right i have an internet i have an access to technology i am applying for a job in dxc technologies or fixever technologies right so how do you see you know this differentiator and how students have to be a differentiator just one point uh, maybe uh, joshua you would like to take yes yes charles that's a beautiful yes charles that's a beautiful question in 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 my in my talk i was just talking about how digital footprint is going to make a difference right you can be in all the platforms but what is that you are going to represent how many blogs uh, you have written or what is the conversation you have did with the hrs of that company definitely that is going to make a difference i will give a classical example we have 
uh, recruiting uh, close to four or five uh, juniors very recently in XRW. Uh, because now the demand, you know, uh, we are coping up with 2020 plus 2021. So do, the demand is double and triple these days and the pressure is also uh, mounting up. So we were supposed to hire close to four or five folks and you will not uh, believe, Charles, uh, there were a few folks who was continuously interacting with me uh, during our days. We were doing a lot of uh, virtual sessions together uh, during this pandemic as well. So those point in time, people were really following up and they were talking. You will not believe I hired three people from the list today and they've already joined Hexaware. So my point is don't stop. Don't try yourself or stop yourself in reaching out uh, to the industry people. They're not going to be, they're not aliens. They're going to definitely respect you as an individual, as a human being and say, yes, you have it. No, we don't have it. As simple as that. You're not going to drag and say, no, you are not the right person. If you are the right person, they are definitely going to drive you into the organization. If you're crazy enough, if you have the right attitude and if your presence is felt in the digital, it doesn't mean that you need to be physical. It doesn't mean you need to really come to the office today. The entire scenario is new normal. How are we going to cope up with the new normal? Is the question mark. And if students across the globe, wherever you are, you can be in Chinama Pati or in whatever parties you're talking about. I think if you have the right approach, the right delt, you will be hired. Over to you, Charles. Thank you. Thank you, Joshua. Uh, next question now, I would like to shoot out this question to Shivaraj himself because he mentioned that word called stress. Right? Today, my six-year-old talks about stress who is in first hand. Right? A pre-KG kid talks about stress, depression, and so on. Right? And uh, now, I, I'm still finding an answer for that. But uh, now, Shivaraj, how do you see uh, this word called stress? You know, uh, when I was, you know, uh, I mean, referring to Kavita earlier, you know, being a women leader in a factory, right? Uh, a mom handling a situation, uh, you know, uh, during the season and, uh, you know, everybody, right? And, and Nithya Nandani is there and, uh, you know, women play a very, very important role, especially in nurturing kids as well. You now today, most of the time, you know, they spend online classes along with their kids. So, uh, just a simple example or your message related to stress, so-called stress for the business graduates. Uh, not stress a is a common yeah. word to everyone, right? <laughs> <laughs> Even to the smaller, to the older people, it is really tough. But uh, the people doesn't know what exactly stress actually. Handling of pressure itself uh, becomes a, uh, a stress. It is actually a multitasking. We have to think in a different way that we have a capable of uh, uh, flexibility and uh, uh, adopting to the multitasking because now the entire world is going to change. Uh, um, I think uh, uh, in another few uh, years ago, like uh, the people uh, crowd is going to be reduced. They are all going to be in a robotic way also. Uh, the, the handling of people and uh, handling of uh, interaction with the people is going to be very less because it's going to be more on technology part. So I think uh, try to be very connective with the people. Uh, wherever you go, the, even the high technology is improved also. The connecting the people and uh, human touch plays a very major role to um, be a unique in uh, all the industries. So we should not uh, 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 go out from that uh, touch actually. So that is my... Uh, very nice. Go the good uh, uh, growth actually. Very nice. Now connect with people. That's very very important. Whether you are three year or six year or a seventy year old person, right? Connect with people. Uh, Shivaraj, anything to add from your side? No, just yeah. one tip. So, so, yeah. yeah. So Charles, uh, on this pandemic thing, while we were uh, working from home, uh, uh, because because I keep uh, handling a lot of Gen Z kids, so something uh, which came up is not financial stress. So, which we don't keep talking about. So, while we were interacting, uh, though, though we hired them at an exponential cost, say, from IMs or your ISBs or a lot of kids from IITs, uh, uh, while we were interacting with these folks, we came to know something that uh, they, they, they are clueless about, like, on their financial uh, part as well. Because, see, like, Gen Z, at, at this generation, they want everything very fast. They want to become CEO in next three uh, three years. They want to become director in three years. Uh, they might be starting uh, starting with a coder, but but they want to eventually grow up very very fast. 
Uh, I, and similarly, the same stress which came up with them on on is on the financial stress because of a lot of peer pressure coming around, and these kids are from a lot of uh, from different other uh, places as well. So uh, we we did a small thing uh, on on coming up with a small financial wellness program exclusively for this Gen Z kids, and and we told them like uh, how do you need to invest on this pandemic? How do you need to create a corpus for you? Like say for example, you want to become an entrepreneur. Say hey, here is what the money that you have got for. So how do you go and build this corpus over for next five years? So uh, uh, rather than just being an HR business partner, we we probably turned out into a way of being a a lot of uh, friendly guide philosopher in terms of uh, helping our own employees, especially the Gen Z kids, to ensure that their financial stress is also taken care. Because these these are all the underlying uh, thing that not many are talking about. But I feel like this is something like where a lot of organizations should eventually look into about like. How does this financial stress can be taken care of? So that's that's a small thing that which I wanted to highlight it over here, Charles. Thank you, thank you, Shivraj. Uh, quickly, I'm going to the next question, Nitin, and then a very short, brief question. Today, you now students, you know, or 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 myself, you know, any professional, we prepare six page or ten page uh, resume. It's very very easy, right? I can Google. Uh, download a, a draft. You know, I have 40 members, students. I can change my name, my parents' name, my my gender. That's all. That's enough. Right. So today, how you see you know from pressures as a differentiator with regard to how they carry themselves you know with their profile or resume when social media plays a very important role in spite of all that. Yeah. So very relevant question for anybody across any level of experience. So. um i think two things again the communication point what you write in your resume uh is it the same as what you say like if you say if you have written that you have experience in this industry or uh, this skill when you talk about it in the interview is it resonating i think that's something which will check the consistency and another thing uh, which led which was related to the point said by the other panelist around um, social media footprint so it's not necessary that you have to be there everywhere it's not necessary that you have to write thousand blogs you have to be on linkedin facebook as well as instagram and put all the handles everywhere in your uh, resume but whatever you are mentioning make sure that that is yours whatever you're mentioning should be yours be as authentic as possible and even in um, there should not be uh, ajit or talabadi photo there right? <laughs> exactly uh, exactly so that's the important part Sorry, sorry. Go ahead, uh, Nandini. No, so just... yeah, so consistency and what you communicate is important. And uh, you could also look at um, don't write pages and pages. Nobody has the time to look at that in your resume. Uh, maximum two pages, but which means that you have to put the right tag words, right? Find out uh, uh, in these HR networks or uh, in LinkedIn what are the catchy uh, tag words which. Re recruiters are looking for are you looking for uh, data analytics if you're looking at data analytics what are the linked uh, tag words is it you know um, next generation demographics pull out all those keywords but make sure that your resume is not a cloud of keywords it has to make logical sense with whatever your skills are just don't say oh i have to put more tag words let me put it because end of the day um, the recruitment portal of the organization will have a parser to filter out the tag words which will uh, shortlist you from the thousands of resumes but once you reach the interview panel and if whatever tag word you've put is not matching with what you're saying then you're out so consistency is very important so that's that's the quick tip that i would like to leave you with thank you thank you namani i i'll uh, pass on the last question to tilak uh, tilak uh, now uh, especially uh, you know a company like lnt right uh, today you know uh, for example i'm a ba graduate and i got my uh, you know i i got into my mba program you know you are a core engineering company for example right uh, one of your uh, core wing so why a hr person or a sales person or a marketing person should know about the basic foundation of engineering is all about and how much more important for an mba graduate Hope you got my question, Philip. Yeah, Charles. Thank you for Thank this you. question. Actually, we generally uh, say this LNT is a engineer's paradise. So we recruit engineers for all the areas. If given a chance, we want some housekeeping. We try to recruit first engineers. 
<laughs> so that possibilities are not there so we move into other graduates so for a, a lighter sense i told that but if you look at this engineers population at lnt is almost a 90 percentage so balance 10 percentage is other graduates or mba even mba we look at engineer plus mba uh, for to recruit a hr person or to recruit a uh, some other uh, administrative persons we look at engineering as a key uh, aspect for recruitment another uh, very important thing it is almost to your underlining uh, these people will understand the business better that is the one criteria i would like to say because sometimes even non engineers are understanding more about the business but that is the assumption we getting into this uh, this engineers will quickly understand the business will quickly understand the uh, problems and the getting into solution mode that is the one aspect i would like to communicate thanks thanks philip thank you so much uh, you know each and every one the panel members now just to conclude my dear friends now i don't want to take time i just i'll just take 60 seconds or so you now um, many you know i mean many thoughts you now from all the four panel members and uh, today I just want to share one you know thought alone as a closing remark you now we have been talking about iim we have been talking about iit now i would like to talk about uh, one of our initiative in zoho called zoho schools of learning wherein we hire students we hire kids who who are from 12th or diploma from even from a remote remote village and today you know you would have seen one of the trending news in all the uh, in all the news channels and so on in linkedin facebook twitter insta and now you can find a name called uh, abdul alim now he was a security guy working for about 12 hours per day you know to to take care of his basic needs he came from assam 6 7 years back and uh, he was checking the laptops every day night midnight you no know, when an employee leaves the organization right the security check uh, and main gate security and, and and the floor security kind of role he was doing and beyond his 12 hours he had some thirst to you know explore and one manager you know found him on a e- late evening and he said Chal, uh, uh, he said abdul you know kanla edo or paakar i'm seeing something on your eyes and he said what you know he said in eighth standard i studied html c++ and he called him for a meet and today for the last 6 years he is one of our software engineer in our company an eighth standard java html c++ the very very basic what he has learned and today that's the difference that's the world we are living in today lnt is exploring hcl is exploring zoho schools of learning that's what you now we believe in whether you are learning with context whether you are learning with relevance whether you are learning with experience and that's the differentiator my dear friends that's the brand image which you carry from firebird not just the firebird as a brand not just iim as a brand not just iit as a brand my dear friends what is the brand image you create as an mba graduate with this closing remarks now wishing you all the very best and uh, be a differentiator and see what kind of brand you are carrying thank you so much for this opportunity over to the people thank you mr charles i think it was uh, absolutely amazing beautifully moderated and listening to all these uh, wonderful panelists no it was really a, a feast to our ears in fact and uh, also no like you were mentioning about uh, how even a 3 year old child is getting stressed out today and people mentioning about how humble we need to be and how uh, people even a security person is scaling up to become a, a software uh, person now that's simply impressive beautifully moderated once again uh, let us all give a thumbs up to uh, charles garden godwin for having moderated the first session to uh, the best possible way so i think the challenge is more for the next moderator Uh, we are going to have a topic the next gen skill set for dynamic workplace now we have taken care of the workforce now it is about the workplace for this panel discussion number 2 ladies and gentlemen let us have with us mr daniel jacob vice president hr ec group international so he again he is an encyclopedia we can call it and he is ready to moderate this session with again a beautiful set of panelists over to you mr daniel Sure. Thank you so much, and good morning, all of you. Uh, is my audio audio audible and good? Okay, good. 
okay what a privilege on a saturday you know uh, as many of us in the hf fraternity know more than the weekdays saturdays make us you know gives more joy and uh, we're able to meet a lot of people more, many of the you know, hf fraternity here we are friends because of saturday <laughs> so thanks to saturday and uh, it's we should have been meeting face to face as everybody said but it's okay thanks to technology we are able to do this and thank you firebird for having us uh, here and thank you uh, brother duke for your arrangement now this event was kind of coined in adair anand bhavan ananagar in chennai now we were talking we were <laughs> so that's how the plan was there after you now meeting with ramesh bro and charles bro he came and we decided on this meeting and we said we should do this and that's how it started so a lot can happen over adair anand bhavan coffee also so uh it's a joy and in uh, uh, i think the first session was amazingly went very well the kind of input that we were able to hear uh, for the future of work uh, uh, and the kind of skill set the future of uh, uh, work needs and demands and uh, it's a definitely a kind of a diverse uh, kind of a diverse uh, topic and the views and uh, nice to see you joshua bro and now all are good friends here and it was great to hear you no know, people talking from lnt to you know dxc to you know a startup and from zogo i as per you know, charles started with you no know, it was a great learning and we are here to learn good so getting on to our second topic uh, the discussion uh, uh, before that actually we have uh, uh, two panel members not joining us today because of some emergency in their personal uh, uh, work Uh, one is Mr. Trida and another one is Mr. Deepa, and they also need our prayers. Okay, and uh, that's why you now uh, we kind of leverage the first panel to take some more time. So don't worry about the time; we are doing good. Now we thought it was intentional. Okay, good. So we so far we heard about how a skill set, a mindset, is necessary to get into a new job as a student. as a uh, you know learners you now what should we have to get into a job and what is expected and so on the second panel will be talking about how the workplace by itself is changing and how dynamically it is changing to get into such environment what is necessary so we're going to kind of a create you give you a kind of a picture on how the workplace is changing the dynamic change and thanks to covid it kind of compelled all of us to do a lot of changes that what somebody asked now who's the uh, uh, champion for digital in your organization is it your ceo or is it your cto and the answer came corona <laughs> because corona pushed all of us to change without any time right that's how it was and that's how it was felt now we uh, as no uh, all of us said last uh, last year this time we just started you now uh, after the lockdown uh, anno was announced we were all thinking it's going to be for 15 days right all our plan was for 15 days then the prime minister came and sent for one more month and he said one more month and we really did not know how to change this totally and now we are getting ready for lockdown 2.0 right in our minds and because the the very reason we are here as virtual event is because of that and now the yesterday we had a, a day before yesterday day before yesterday we had a full day of planning meeting in our organization and we were i was able to literally see how we are, are the thinking itself is changed last year we were thinking about for one year a uh, quarter year and what do we do and all that this year we are thinking long term this year we wanted to make sure it is not remote work it's we are talking about hybrid work place hybrid workplace we are talking about anybody should be able to connect from anywhere and work now how can we make it possible as no charles said it's not from your you now house from chennai it's from your hometown in a remote place papanai kampalayam or no and whatever patti that is that person should be able to work from there as an organization that's a big challenge for us how can we rethink the way we think of the workplace how can we train and provide facility for our employees to think in the direction okay that is what we are going to be discussing today and uh, so we'll be having a, a great people today here i've heard them before i always enjoy hearing them the kind of view they bring in 
and uh, so we have mr natwar from hyundai motors and we have uh, ms pridarshni from food hub and you know what pridarshni right now she is in air card and uh, and because the plan was changed she's there and the the cools of air you know air card from the cliffs of the mountains she is going to be talking to us and also we have now brother ramesh aditya uh, we are going to be talking about the workplace today quickly give a kind of a, a, a quick overview about you now how things are changing in the workplace there are shifts happening literally we are seeing shifts it's not just because of the pandemic even before it, the shift is changing technological shift is a big shift in the work arena generational shifts are a big shift now a lot we heard about it's a shift and also social shifts okay these shifts need to be it is these are in our mind as we actually create a workplace how do we do it now how do we make a policy that a kind of accommodates everybody a kind of you no know, embraces everybody that is what actually you now we think about and there are a lot of things you no know, uh, uh, that we continue to do you no know, navigating market and de demographic shifts okay the market is shifting the demography is also shifting how can we do that and uh, also you no know, anticipating the impact of the new technology okay how can we not invest too much in one technology because the technology is going to change soon now how can we actually handle that and also the the employment models by itself is changing uh, and it uh, uh, it is becoming unavoidable now it is not based on demand it's not because of somebody wants to do it it is becoming a new model we got to do it now we saw priyadarshni from the you no know, uh, 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 the drawing room of her house she is connected to a conference here right and that is how we are all all of us in the room we know the tv is going on in the hall for all of us and the kids are playing i have my 3 year old once in a while knocking my door to check out whether the meeting is over or not so that now she can play with me and that is how things are changing and also the the plan for the future talent needs also is changing we do not know uh, uh, one of the challenges as recruiters as hr people we have is how do we hire on board and you no know, give work to a person whom we have not met with now we use video technologies and all that is good but how do we really make it no recently during this pandemic we are trialing out a model okay we are a software company so we hire you now software developers especially you now experienced developers we hire 8 years 10 years and some technology usually there will be a technical interview now we are giving away with a technical interview we are saying we'll give you a task we'll give you a developer from our side you and the the interviewer the developer and the interview we they will be working together for 3 hours by the end of 3 hours the interviewer will the developer will give a kind of feedback on how they did for example if you're hiring for a python experience python skill set if the person who's worked already in python we will not interview them on python we will say let us start coding in c sharp they say no we don't know that's okay let us do it together share the screen how soon that person is able to pick up c sharp and start coding within that period and you know amazingly we are able to see results even the candidate themselves are surprised that within 3 hours they were able to learn a technology a skill a, a programming language and code and deliver and selected also get selected also so uh, it is think making us think differently entirely on how we set up a place so that we are able to you know get the right people in that is what we are going to be discussing and uh, uh, to start with i will you know welcome mr natwa from hyundai motors because last year almost probably you no know, uh, one year before <laughs> exactly we had a similar uh, now uh, hr conclave in crescent engineering uh, a, a management department was you now you know, arranged the same kind of event where we were all charles myself and natwa Uh, all we were there uh, on this panel we were talking about and then we were asking hey no you're a uh, no uh, korean company now we hear about korea is being affected now how is going on and so on and they were the ones started implement from the manufacturing sector started implementing things all the protocols even before the other company started i'm sure now he's going to give us some kind of uh, 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 kind of eye openness to us on how things are changing can i invite mr natwa on Onto the video and yep. Hey, uh, hi, good morning to all of you and uh, thank you, Firebird Management and 
uh, HR Lens, and I also understand NIPM. For thanks for inviting me here. It's a great privilege and opportunity to talk to the young generations. Uh, before I start talking about it, thanks uh, Daniel for setting up the context of the what I need to be on stage. Well, uh, yes, it's good with us saying that had it been more physical, we would have enjoyed it. How much ever we talk about it, uh, that uh, virtual is the new norms, but still somewhere inclination in my mind that somewhere we definitely need uh, physical uh, meat because there's too much of virtual on it. So uh, coming back to what I'm here for, uh, yes, COVID has brought a lot of changes in our life, uh, but that doesn't mean that uh, the change were not there. Change were there from, from the start where we were talking about. And a few things which I thought uh, I'll share it with you. I'll start with one story which uh, somewhere close to my heart. And I also understand the domination here is by the students. And before I go ahead and talk about my story is that I just wanted to tell you that my biggest threat of my job would be taken away by the generation which is going to come who have not even joined the work who'll be joining a work in a year and two because this young generation are aware and updated what's going in the world and wherein we need to equip ourselves so uh so that's that's the first thing which i want to clear to all your mind that you are definitely is the best you are knowing what's going on and we need to know what's going on so you can take away a job. So that clears your mind that there's a lot of opportunities waiting for you. Coming back to something which is a small story, which I thought I always start my, my talk with that story. And I just thought uh, this is something which, which sounds and very relevant to hear. Uh, long days, the, there was a railway track where the work was going on. And in the railway track, there was a couple of workers working in the railway track. Suddenly on the next track, a train stops. And an AC compartment, a man comes out and says, hey, Dave, can you please come inside the compartment? So the rail workers are quite shocked. A train comes, stops, and calls one of the workers inside the compartment. So when he goes inside the compartment, all, his, all the outside workers listens to the noise which is coming out. There are, there are so many noise of... Uh, laughing, joying, clapping. There's a lot of fun going inside. After a couple of minutes, Dave comes out, steps out, and there's a man right on the door, bids bye to him. On seeing this, uh, the workers were quite amazed. Uh, and every, out of curiosity, they went, Dave, Anderson was the person. And he said, hey, Dave, can you tell us, it is quite surprising to see a train stops for you. And and the person calls you inside, there's a lot of noises, and you steps out after 20 minutes. What actually happened? So Dave, after uh, a pause, he says, guys, do you don't know who is he? The one who stops and came out and say, no, we don't know. He says, the Jim Murphy, the chairman of American Railways. And uh, the people were become more curious. So why a chairman of American Railways has actually stops the train for the Dave Anderson? So he said, let me tell you a small story, a story in night story. He says, 20 years before me and Jim both joined the organization together. Well, I came the I joined the organization for one dollar and twenty-five cents. And wherein Jim joined the organization for his to make a career. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm actually talking about a true story of an uh, American Railways. Jim Murphy ended up becoming a chairman. Dave Murphy, uh, Dave Anderson retained to be a worker. They both join in the same job, same place, same designation, but the same salary. All you see is Jim Murphy becoming in 20 years and a chairman. All that I wanted to convey a lesson to all of you that uh, I think it's a time has come that you don't join organization for uh, benefits, what you see intangible, but look things intangible. Look something which you really need to focus on your career, your growth. I think that's more important. And I wish to see that when an institute start saying that we are developing more entrepreneurs than job takers. So uh, that's something, a story to share. I thought it's more be more relevant. And uh, coming back to the workplace, I need to be in the context, else Daniel will not be happy with me. <laughs> well, uh, yes, uh, I, can, I hail from a manufacturing organization. Thanks to, uh, you know, uh, the IT infrastructure, which has been set up on, and, you know, I somewhere feel jealous about the IT companies that you guys, when it was a co-pandemic, you were all sitting at home and working. 
but that's a sad fact of mine that i was right at the work right from the lockdown started from march 23 the in fact the job of mine became more high i had the er now so it's the job is much more tougher it's not just the people it also ensuring that your workplace is the same we are from the manufacturing of cars we don't even call nowadays a manufacturing we are a mobility service provider mm-hmm. uh, the car business have paradigmly changed today car is your is your third home which we call it and we are making all our effort to change the cars that tomorrow it, it can even fly that's where we, the entire industry is grooving on well i could if i go back a little bit of strength 2019 Uh, was a slowdown and a biggest hit for the auto industry so we have actually seen the three decades slowdown uh, in the car industry in 2019 so we were hit very badly and 2020 everybody knows the pandemic how it has affected business i still remember in our history of uh, of the since we have come in 1996 and started our first operation in 1998 i think the only month we didn't produce was april 2020 we didn't produce a single car so all the it where i read on the papers that you were most of the industries were operating in full swing uh, we were actually zero down uh, but our our processes were very clear that we need to ensure that our plants are ready are equipped our people are safe and confident i think that's very difficult part of it so it's very difficult to bring people back at home you need to build that confidence because where your some part of your jobs definitely can work from home but cars are not built at home you need to be on the floor to build the cars so uh, yes we indeed harness the best part of the technology uh, so whatever but end of the day you need to be at the floor to build the cars and you can just imagine a blue collar talking to you hey uh, i'm here back in the shop floor mm-hmm. building a car and you are sitting at back at home and working from home you're a much more safer and i'm not so you understand there is a significant difference in what we need to stress on building the workplace uh much more comfortable confidence and safe so i think uh where i i was listening to a couple of speakers you know the impetus of how covid has brought a new normal i think all i have to change when i have looked at a past decade the change was always there it was always there the change was at a slow place uh today we are harnessing ourselves to the technology even a manufacturing company like us have actually split wide open and accepting technology in anything and everything today when we are looking at how do we can automate the entire processes wherever possible we we have gone ahead uh, you know doing a meetings with the unions virtually we have done everything is much more possible except building the cars and hope that also gets it to the future but having said everything i uh, however the best of it the workplace has been to where its technology we are also talking about remote working flexi hours this this was kind of dream at the manufacturing companies today everything is there but it's very clear uh, you need to ensure business continuity i think to all of you students sitting up there i just wanted to tell you apart from all the skills which every speaker was talking about i think something which you all need to learn wherever you are whatever jobs you do if you're not able to connect to the business if you're not able to deliver to the business i think you go out of the context i think that's something which win variably is one of the important skills so uh even uh, being an hr or er all of our jobs become actually very mandate we need to ensure business continuity and that that we have done and thanks to the uh, pent up demand or we call it as a luxury car or lux, uh, car become a luxury is now turn out to be a must have business are doing good but is that the enough i think is that the uh, workplace changes no i think workplace changes will evolve over a period of time and by the time you all step into the organization and come you will see a paradigm change the way we work the way we deal yes there will be a lot of and uh, you know we're talking about there will be much of the people even in the manufacturing will see a forever uh, work from home would be offered we are actually doing a virtual campus this year i mean i i probably don't believe but we had to do it this year so technology will definitely you need to accept it uh, there are three words which i reminds to me is that flexibility adaptability and be agile so if you be that i think anything and everything which come forward to you you will be able to take off i just wanted to say a couple of 12 steps before you take off i might be slightly over the out of the context but i thought being a student a uh, couple of my own experience i thought if i stress it out uh, it's going to be beneficial to you uh, the rule number 1 be courageous to fail because the sky is the limit and when you rise after the fall is the glory so uh well 
everybody was talking about somebody is from a small they're not from big great big school somebody is from village zoho story was mm-hmm. evident when they talked about i think success is not about where you come from and the success is all about what you're ready to do it uh, even i had you know when i was done with the college i had no man's land i didn't know where to hit on what to do but i think uh, when you accept your failures and you learn from your failures success is just step away all just you need is that be courageous to fail i think things will change in your life too uh second rule number is don't follow the crowd crave your own path well i'm i'm actually a you know cfa chartered a financial analyst i've done a audit job but i think i just fall in line with what everybody wanted to do but that's not my style either i know i moved on uh, i did my masters today hr um i'm i feel that this is what defines me so don't do something what crowd is doing it i think don't go with what everybody is doing it please peep in yourself i think you are creating a significant difference today the world has changed it is no more about the the degree which you possess i think the qualities and skills and competency and most important the passion which you have i think that's more important uh, i think you know zoho story with charles was sharing it it's clearly example that you can make wonders wherever you are a uh, perfect job is a myth and the grass is always greener on the other side you know i was not high placed campus so when am i in my post graduate i was not the high placed and today i think you know among the my batch members i'm well placed in terms of career in terms of benefits so don't look at short term benefits look at the long term benefits i think look for yourself what difference you want to make it's not about the best companies you work for it's companies the best you work for and make the companies best i think that something is very important rule number 4 uh, the best pot is shaped when it is wet and not when it is dry i think uh, you know colleges faculties uh, mentors whomever you meet across your lifetime i think they will only facilitate your process the real learning will only come then when you realize that you want to shape yourself that's something very very important so be it campus be it off campus i think start taking effort to learn yourself groom change yourself i think in every day if you learn one simple thing i think you will make a paradigm difference to your life uh one more thing which i really wanted to start uh, wherever i go people talk about communication skills is very important i mean deed is very important because you need to have a rapid connect between your mind and a tongue but i just wanted to tell you that communication is not english communication is if you are able to make the other person understand what you intend to communicate i think that's communication i think gone then the days where you need to be embarrassed when you are not able to speak good english i think be proud enough in a local language but i just wanted to stress you when i see students learning german french i think it's time for you to learn other indian languages as well i think pride begins right at home and then i think once you know our own languages i think that you will make yourself more mobile to shift yourself to any parts of the india a uh, couple of things rule number 5 look beyond what you see i i love the movie called lion king and mint it's, it's a simple thing it's look beyond what you are actually seeing it you know uh, keep your passions hobby kicking in life i think uh, people were talking about in your social media presence i would not try to limit yourself be whatever you want to be all just i wanted to say that there are certain hobbies of yourself keep life and kicking anything what you do be it uh, be it a long drive be in an adventure keep doing because job will just going to be a part of life it's not heart of life so it's 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 your alternative with your passion which will keep you alive and take you to your dreams which you have it's rule number 6 get reassured and having a job is a mistake mistake you can make you know people think now i've got a job my life is set i think that's not something uh just wanted to tell you before you get into the any organization uh there are various uh, platform which you need to learn the most important is i just stress to everybody be a chameleon uh chameleon no more of a negative word which is used on a context but i just want to tell you that if you be a chameleon you will be able to color yourself to the best of the skills you know uh best of the colors of the organization whether it be a zoho or it be a google or mm-hmm. be a comes from authoras manufacturing more important is uh color yourself to the dna of the organization uh it's a vuka world you know uncertainty will be there right from your day don't think that you got into a big company or a smaller company it's important that difference what you make right from day one show that what difference you can make as an individual rule number 7 life best principle comes from johnny walker i'm no i'm sure people who love drinking would love mm-hmm. johnny walker i love the tagline which says keep walking i think uh, 
uh, I, I remember when I joined my job was I was doing a photocopy for about 28 days, but that didn't put me down. Today, whatever I am the best of my knowledge, it's all about that photocopying. So it doesn't matter what job you're doing in the organization. I just remember my small, small story. Uh, three people doing a breaking a stone. A day, uh, one person was asked, hey, what are you doing? He said, don't you see I'm breaking a stone? The second one, mm-hmm. he said, don't you? I'm trying to make something out of it. The third one said, I'm building a castle. I think very important for you to connect to the big picture. I think if you do that, if you're flexible, does not matter how the workplace is going to be tomorrow. You will definitely make a lot of difference. Uh, rule number eight is that a leader who cannot persuade to, is a manager. Mm-hmm. I think uh, there are a lot of things in your life would be coming, but I'll just wanted to tell you is that there are problems and challenges will make you shape you a much more better person. All important is persistence, patience, and passion will drive your force. Uh, most important is today's generation don't feel that patience is very important. Let me tell you, there are days which you will not be able to take it through. There are days which will, you will be completely down. I think uh, be happy when there is a dark because the day is waiting for you. Uh, rule number nine, uh, which stay hungry, stay foolish. Don't wait to be served. Go grab your food. Uh, don't think that everybody comes to your plate and will serve you what you want. Today is a world where the learning is open. Go learn, come back, keep shaping. Don't expect organization to invest on you to bring that change so you're adaptable to changing. No, I think time has come for you to adapt yourself. Rule number 10, integrity is when nobody's seeing you. I think that's something which all of us to know. Integrity, when I'm talking from the context of we, I still feel, feel that work is definitely a workshop. You know, it may sound a little conventional, but trust me, it will change your life. Uh, don't cheat yourself. You don't cheat yourself because you can cheat anybody in this world. But when you look yourself in the mirror, uh, I remember that what you will see is yourself. So very important is that focus on what who you are. And you know, when nobody is seeing it, and when you make a difference, is that what calls the integrity is? And that day, I'm sure that you will start making changes to the world around you. Sometimes your weakness, rule number eleven, is uh, sometimes your weakness can be your biggest motivator. Uh, my biggest weakness was I was not able to speak on a stage even for a minute. I remember I was embarrassed when I was in a ninth standard when I was told to go and speak on a stage and give a uh, thank you speech. Honestly, folks, I was not able to speak a word. Uh, today, I have done uh, thousands of uh, sessions for students, be the business school or engineering. I think that's where today is my strength. So accepted what your weakness is. Everybody in this world has a weakness. The toppest person in this world, the richest person in the world has a weakness. So you are. So when you accept it, working on it, that day you will make a lot of difference. I, I would end with a small story if I definitely have a time, especially on the rule number 11. Uh, the rule number 12 is something which is very, very important. Fly high as you want, but never forget who taught you to fly. Uh, we always forget that, you know, we got a job, we, we celebrate our milestone, uh, we got a car, we got a first salary, we, we build a house, we keep doing our first. And then always in your celebration, you see yourself. Please look back when you develop to what you were. I think that's not just you. There are thousands of people around you would have built. I think, uh, you know, I was listening to Charles. I was listening to a lot of people. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the other uh, moderators, I'm mean, sorry, not the speaker is talking about. All this, just when you get the first job, I think when you make that first call to your parents, more than you being anything, your parents on the other side will have a cheer. You, when you go and share it to your faculty, they will be happy. I think the mentors, the speakers which come and contribute to you. I think there is a whole lot of world around you makes you what you are today. I think always be appreciative to what they are doing it. The, this skill is something which nobody is going to teach you. I think this is the humbleness which you always, Every there was a faculty which was talking and speaker was talking about be grounded, fly high, high as you want. I think that's something very important. Uh, if you keep appreciating the world around you, keep keep thinking of those, I mean, you're appre- thanking those people who have contributed even the person in the college who been cleaning your, you know, uh, your uh, classrooms when you're not there. Do you know the security folks' name? I think very important. I learned from a couple of previous group of company. They know even the, the MD of the company would actually know about the security guy's name. I think if you're able to connect that, you're able to connect to the society and the world, and that will make you a much more better person in this world. Uh, I just wanted to tell you with a one quote, which very, very close to me is, it's no longer about capability. I think 
stop talking about competency. Am I capable enough? Am I be able to do it? No, it's all about your capability. If you're able to stand there and make a difference, be there and be able to cope up to the changing needs. I think be it any workplace tomorrow, be it a very highly technological, be it uh, be it a very traditional, be it the organization you will still find who had not made any changes. You will be able to make difference with the word capability. I I think I'll just uh, Daniel. I just want to know: Do I have a minute to tell a small story? And I would like to end it with that. Sure, you can take a minute. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, just wanted to tell you a story of. Uh, Kakus, uh, Tekus is the person who inspires me a lot. It's a 1920 story, which I was wanted to share with you all. He's a person who was actually, you know, lifelong right from a childhood, want to be a shooter. And, you know, that time it was mandatory to be you to be a part of the military force in France. So he joined in a military force. The first thing he was given a gun and people were amazed that he was able to shoot always on a bullseye. So with his right hand, whenever he takes his hand, shoots in on a bullseye. And uh, people knew that he is the guy who will take us to Olympic. So wherever any sports and event comes, he will always be a gold medalist. The entire country was aspiring that he goes and joins in the Olympic. One of the sessions when he was doing a drill, he was given a hand granite. And while doing, using the hand granite, when he was throwing the hand granite, the hand granite actually burst in his right hand. And he lost his right hand. So Takas, when he lost his right hand, everybody around it, was absolutely saddened because Struckers would actually get them the gold medalist in Olympics, which a country would never got it. And today he lost his right hand. So Tuckers go, Tuckers goes back where nobody in the world knows what he's doing it, comes back after a year. There is a, there is a national level competition and everybody thinks that Tuckers has come today to inspire and motivate the, all the shooters. And he goes and say, I'm here to participate. He goes, takes his left hand and shoots it right on the bullseye. Tuckers went on winning Olympic for the country. Well, I'm, I'm just trying to cut short the story. I just wanted to tell you that we all along, let me be at a college. Let me be your society, your peer group. Everybody around us is so conditioned in our life that they tell us that what are our weaknesses? And, you know, everybody talks about our weaknesses. We actually also individually think that, okay, I cannot do it because I'm not capable enough for doing that. I think that you all need to realize one simple thing in life is that, which I was talking about, accept your weakness and move that into a strength. Takas did the same thing. He worked on his weakness for one year, one year right in the dark side of his life, used his left hand, did a practice day and night. And we went on to become an Olympic gold medalist. I think you can Google about a Tucker's story. You will know about a much more detailed version of it. I just wanted to tell you that uh, be it this, I'm sure the skills have changed. I was talking about the moment I started my speech. Folks, I am very scared that my job will be taken away by you all. When I say this, I mean it from the heart because you all are equipped today with AI, data analytics. You know how 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 the entire organization is changing. You you know the best of the how how would you operate with the the rather being a basic level of technology or high level of technology, rather being a tech job or non tech job. Everybody is equipped with technology. We all know how the world is going. You you know with the strategy, word strategy, processing. I think you are aware of everything, but just understand all of us today. I think we'll all have to doing a reverse mentoring and learn everything what you're right learning in the college. If probably I have reached to this level of, uh, you know, I, I relatively young among the department heads in our organization. But let me tell you, you can break that in a half of the period what I did it because you've been exposed to the world, which is right in your fingertips and you know everything and everything. So I just don't, I want to tell you nothing to worry about the workplaces tomorrow. I think things will keep changing it's very important that you keep changing yourself in every moment. Keep learning, keep growing. That's all from me. Thank you so much. Very good. In Tamil Nadu, superstar is known for giving a lot of small stories. So I think uh, we should call Natwar a superstar of HR fraternity in telling stories. And probably I'll tell, recommend this Firebird uh, Institute to take his uh, session alone and put it uh, no, as a cut, one of the cuts and post it in social media. It may be useful for many. And thank you, Mr. Natwa. And as he how he started, 
given the companies are identifying themselves by different ways it is not no more automobile company it's a mobility company right so that is how things are entirely changing and uh, uh, people uh, you know with a vr and ar you no know, even manufacturing you now have you ever thought an operation can be uh, physical in the medical field a surgery can be done from remotely <laughs> robotics now a, 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 a physician a surgeon from uh, germany gets on to his you now surgery room and operate the person from you now sims in you now vadapalni that is how you now the workplace is entirely changing and the technology is shifting and thank you for all the 12 additional points mr natwa i am sure the students fraternity will be you now benefited out of it i mean, i still remember the previous stories i've heard from you in the previous sessions you now different times thank you so much for your time and uh, so we ended with a man uh, in the beginning uh, in charles's you know uh, panel we we'll end with a, a, a woman but before that i would like to invite you now mr ramesh aditya he is a person actually kind of shifted from workplace to workplace at different criteria no it's a dream for any uh, person who wants to try out different things from a corporate to a placement officer to an ias academy now as a strategist and he, you keep traveling and you see different workplaces and you uh, i i've seen you in all kind of conferences attending and having friends from all kind of backgrounds how do you see the workplace has changed over time the before and think quickly you now in within a short time yes your views mr ramesh uh thanks daniel brother yes uh, you have observed me correctly yes i have changed from our place to our place from corporate uh, fr from uh, being in a recruitment guy moved into training and placements and now i am heading strategy for shankar is academy now it is like what i have perceived and what i have observed so far is that the workplace is changing every day no doubt about it it is not about 3 months 6 months or 9 months or whatever when i was in hr uh, 10 years ago uh, where i was recruiting for cfi technologies for that matter i do not need to sit in my office for almost all the 8 hours or whatever we, to be precise to be frank with you we used to work day in day out i have been handling uh, recruitment for global arena where i was recruiting for people in the us uh, geography and so on so when i speak about recruitment yeah we worked from home uh, way back in 2004 itself 2000 2004 2004 2007 where my calls were bridged uh, no longer i would say that you know, there is like strictly eight hour job is going to be going to be happening going forward uh, as uh, uh, charles brother posted uh, in our group this morning it is about task if you can complete the task you can work from anywhere okay coming to training and placement arena it is a totally different area altogether where i keep traveling meeting people and uh, building relationships yes it is also happening where we can find out that the kind of uh, dynamisms are changing if you look at shankar is academy perspective we where it's again an it's like an extended educational institution where we create officers at the same time right now what we have come to the position where we continue conducting classes online as well now the colleges are closed we are completely online and we our batches are live and it's going on now coming to this uh, change of dynamism in workplaces i think the managers are more particular or they have to come into the particular stage or mindset or understanding that task should be completed and not the hours now everybody has come to the point where okay ramesh have you completed your task i am happy about it that's what my boss says the same way i believe i hope i agree with the, all the other, i mean i hope all the hr people in the panel or watching this they will also uh, understand uh, they will also agree with me that yes it is the task oriented kind of work culture and not the time oriented kind of work culture i think the students have to come to that kind of understanding who are watching this they will have to definitely think over and take ownership of the particular task given to them and complete the task and rest assured they will be comfortable and the bosses will be comfortable com comfortable the clients will be comfortable and it's a chain reaction where you will also be comfortable and satisfied very good yes daddy great Super. so we are moving yeah. from time bound activity to task bound activity simple 
see i am talking to you because the same way today we have an another uh, even going on at uh, mahabalipuram i chose to be here because my boss wanted by as soon as uh, it was learned uh, to my senior management that you know the, the activity is going on for firebird they told me categorically do that event hmm. you have already committed and you have already planned go for it because they gave the complete freedom and uh, in choosing what i have to do this is how the workplaces are changing right okay. there was a meeting also be scheduled or whatever it is now get together is going on lots of activities are happening at a resort in mahabalipuram but i chose to be here yes i just wanted right. to make uh, at this point where the managers at the workplace should give the proper space for the subordinates or the colleagues to choose which is important to them and finish it up of course it should not affect their regular working uh, schedule or the task given to them yes sir today morning charles uh, has posted one uh, uh, post in uh, yes, social media all in the you know, first, it became a kind of a viral so many people are reacting it now yes. it is very relevant to what you have said yes. i'll just read that quote for the benefit of the attendees yes so this is what no uh, it says one of the manager says uh, he says my new employee asked me one day for time off i immediately approved it she was shocked and asked don't you want to know the reason yes. why my reply was i don't need to know the details i hired you to get the job done and i trust you to get it done you choose how you work done come to office at 9 or 9 to 5 fine yes. work from home fine leave early fine work from garage while they fix your car fine we all we are all human we don't need to know we don't need to know you will be late because of doctor's appointment or you are leaving early to attend to a personal matter it is sad how we find yes. infantilized the workplace so much that employees feel the need to apology apologize for having personal lives i am not a clock watcher i trust you to get your job done keep clients happy i am happy so the point this is uh, the this small kind of create the sensation that it created was in the workplace we are expecting a person who joins to work as an owner of the task given to them because we don't want to put a manager for two people and a manager for another two manager and that's all gone in our workplace the expectation we have for anybody who comes and joins is that they will start behaving that they are the owners of the company okay like you now like entrepreneurs that's an intrapreneurs we want them to know i consider I, even though i head the uh, uh, i work in an organization and head a, a function i consider myself as an entre- intrapreneur this is my work i will run just as i run my company and i will take anything necessary for that that is how we are expecting also the workplace is changing we the days are gone that bring your own device because we said you bring your own device now work on any device that you wanted right anywhere from anywhere yes. that is how things are entirely changing that's how also as i now told you in the beginning we have joined have a person <laughs> who joined from air card attending conferences yes. speaking in conference also from anywhere <laughs> that is what is <laughs> yes, happening sir. right now so i would like to now invite our brother, the... brother, adding to it adding to it i would like to add one more point i think the workforce who are moving into this kind of dynamic workplace should have the mindset and keep themselves ready to be the finisher of the tasks and should not expect anything from the top to supervise them so the micromanagement all the management concepts have gone right now so they trust their employees the same way they should ensure the trust on the management and their man- and their managers who are they are and finish the task it's my responsibility to complete the task and go this is where we have to bridge the gap between the uh, workforce and workplace that's how it is exactly right uh, thank you for adding that point mr Bra- now uh, uh, ramesh and uh, yes. thank you and uh, as i started saying so the final speaker uh, before we pick up some questions from audience is ms priyadarshini from food hub and uh, uh, the, as the first speaker of today's you know sh- uh, session start said you now how the swiggy is handling the swiggies and zomatos are handling millions of transactions per day 
okay the the the, the she works for food hub and uh, the food hub uh, it is actually in workplace it's changing right now there is a lot of things going on anywhere you go the workplace is in the street right the workplace is in the restaurant the workplace is in anywhere they, they deliver to the customers that is how they changing and i'm sure you know the different perspective from food hub and the experiences the way they handle employees in the workplace is going to give us some more insights on how the workplace is shifting i would like to with that introduction i would like to welcome ms pridarshni to start with uh, because of the bandwidth issue probably she might be on the video for only short a period and only on the audio over to you ms pridarshni right um, thank you thank you everybody here for this opportunity and um, yes yerkad is really a very chill place um, but unfortunately the wifi here in the resort is not supporting me much so thanks for this opportunity while i start i will go off the video and stay on the audio please excuse me i'll come back on the video again while i conclude my uh, you know part of discussion sure right. excuse me for that right okay um yes um corona we said covid is very ch was very challenging a lot of people lost jobs but i should say food hub we've been very lucky because uh, uh, we handle the takeaway and delivery applications end to end solution for urban so for uh, you know restaurants um, predominantly in the uk australia new zealand and uh, europe with a lot of lockdowns everywhere people were not able to go out and food being a essential part of life one of the basic necessities they were allowed to be open for takeaway and delivery so we had a booming business thanks to covid on that part of it alone which worked well uh, giving opportunities for work for a lot of people in fact we grew by almost close to 25% during this time of covid so i think that the only best thing that happened but while we talk like this it's always good for us to know uh, or to be like god right to understand what is happening everything what what is it that is happening uh, you know around us in terms of everything um yes organizations expect talents to know everything around the business but realistically it's going to be a very tough goal so at least to the extent to know a little much more than what we currently do is what organizations are expecting and this is all about the business that we are talking about employees must learn to grasp the key connections between uh, physical machines uh, you know systems that we use our tools and of course understand uh, in each of the value chain step in the organization about the current and the future business goals also this might sound like jargons but to put it simple we need to understand everything about the business gone are the days where people grow based on the tenuity in the organization but now it is all survival of the fittest until and unless we know things about the business how the business grows it is uh, it's going to be very tough for an individual to grow in an organization so this is the only way where companies will be able to evolve from selling products and you know services to delivering outcomes because delivering outcomes is a value that is being looked for by our customers and customers so the focus is all going to be on omni science now and right. having said that that leads us uh, you know to be on an entrepreneurial mindset because uh, that that leads to a lot of way for innovation i still recollect where you know uh, there were opportunities on saying uh, you need to be highly creative and innovative to be in an r and d division but i think these days every individual is expected to be a r and d division by themselves right because we are looking for a lot of uh, uh, creativity thinking differently thinking out of the box to provide solutions in the organization there's no specific r and d team alone that is required for that every individual can pitch in to give them their thoughts a typical example that i could quote from the software industry is you know we used to have uh, separate uh, roles such as developers testers then we had an it team to deploy and push uh, you know the codes that were developed into the customer environment but currently if you look at it the keyword is asking for a full stack developer right so it is all about ensuring that we are able to club things together how much are we able to think co op uh, you know uh, you know uh, think collaborate and work so it is all about out of the box thinking so until we stay inquisitive and start asking relevant questions at the relevant time it's going to be very difficult so this entrepreneurial mindset is all about ensuring we stay inquisitive we stay innovative 
and you know the talents must become boundary pushers um, in terms of not just products that we wish to develop for the organization but also the processes and tools that we have because they are all very closely linked until and unless we have this link in place is the key here because while we talk about process and we talk about um, you know uh, tools there's something which is beyond this called the most complex human brain right i would say that is most complex of everything else because we can at least study a system but very very difficult to study a human brain so this yardstick that we are going to talk about is about how we are going to measure so when we talk about tools it's not just about technology it's not about uh, you know automating only for you know uh, manufacturing industries and all that let's take a classic example of our own hr fraternity itself so configuration management tools like you know jiras and uh, the uh, uh, css vss they were all predominant managing tasks right so it used to be a part of only a sect of uh, you know people or roles in an organization earlier but now if you look at it it's very important to have these kind of disruptions technology di disruptions for every department in an organization so we've also started adopting the jira boards where we are able to manage our hr projects itself because we look at agility there right we look at managing projects and uh, you know work as a uh, a uh, work through a design uh, thinking and evolving system rather than you know having a traditional paper and pen so technology comes everywhere where we, where we earlier the earlier panel spoke about you know the skills required for individuals to survive there's a lot of technology innovations and disruptions required and we as individuals and talents in the organization should learn to cope with that and uh, since this is better this is a yardstick that we all would like to measure positive in the organization and since better collaboration leads to you know better innovation and more innovation these collaborative tools and processes are very very critical very important so that's another point that i'd like to highlight here um, while we talk about um, i think it says my internet connection is unstable are you able to hear me yes we are here we able to hear now yes so thank you so much on that um, while we talk about all these tools disruptions and all that i also mentioned that one of the most complex uh, thing for us to understand is the human brain right how we talents work together so it's very important for us to develop our emotional intelligence right we need to know we, and we have to constantly keep working on that because that adds a lot of value on uh, you know building ourselves and creating a our path of career progression in an organization do we know why we feel hungry sad have we ever thought about it uh, most people do not realize that we start eating and get more hungry when we are very depressed when we are very angry because we need a we need a kind of diversion from our routine right so we need to understand what is it that is making us feeling agitated at office is it the policies at office that is irking us or are we actually enjoying the positivity of our colleagues around us and are we actually being you know surprised by our bosses or our um, co-workers it's very very important i think in the previous panel uh, our buddies uh, shivraj and kavita spoke about stress right they uh, spoke about uh, stress levels and charles was also talking about how his 6 year old is talking about stress so it's very important for us to monitor how how much we are stressed as it uh, uh, you know affects ev not just everything but also everybody around us and uh, you know common symptoms are you know sleeping over sleeping fatigue uh, you know trouble in concentrating uh, muscle tensions headache there's a lot of social withdrawal that happens we also spoke about social intelligence a while ago so that's very important for us to cope with these issues and we have to remember that when we stew frown or you know grumble uh, around the nation it can actually make people walk on eggshells meaning Uh, making them worried all the while on the bad side so this has a huge effect on the performance of not just the individual but on the organization too and with people around us so we have to constantly keep you know working on our stress levels to understand our emotional intelligence so that we help in building a better culture of performance and understanding with empathy in the organization 
right so um, and finally i would like to talk about one thing that along with all our systems and all right are we are all bound to you know automatically react to situations uh, we should start learning to responding to situations we have to limit our confrontations so typically there's a lot of argument that goes in an organization uh, you know we we disrupt with ideas so first thing is le let's learn to have a civil conversation there because that's when when we start collaborating and discussing and responding to each other's you know thoughts and views our processes become better our innovations become better our tools become better because remember we are talking about disruption at every stage and value chain in the organization so everything starts with a human mind in terms of our emotional intelligence our social intelligence our limit to you know defend ourselves before trying to uh, you know settle a conflict in a discussion understand and evaluate the problem is a small uh, conflict really a part of the bigger issue is what we have to look at uh, i think one of the key examples one of our speakers gave earlier right i think it was not her who said there were three people one person said that you know they were breaking a stone but the bigger picture was there in mind right so we need to understand that bigger picture there uh, is this conflict really going to add value to a solution in the organization to disrupt what is currently there in terms of human thoughts in terms of technology too well most of us fail there um, it is important that we keep this empathy in mind not just towards our colleagues but also towards the systems because they also keep upgrading right this disruption has to happen and most importantly with our customers because unless we know what they go through through their end consumers and clients it's going to be points so i think i really want to cut it short uh um, not in terms of time but in terms of the content that we've been discussing and there's been quite a good gyan session around it but um i would just like to switch on my video at this point of time and just say one thing that we have to learn to be a brand for ourselves while a technology plays a very key role in an organization's growth remember that your attitude towards technology and people around um, keeps you always a step ahead than others so good luck to everybody who been a part of this panel a part of this meeting and um, thank you firebird for this opportunity uh, it's been amazing conversing it's been amazing hearing all of you here thank you sure thank you uh, pridesni for that and also first of all our apologies for keeping inside the room in air card okay you came to air card to enjoy the nature from chennai and sorry for that uh, no i'm enjoying this session okay thank you so much and as you know pridesh was uh, saying how organizations are reinventing themselves to accommodate all of this is the big thing as hr you now when something comes when a challenge is thrown at us when we you now look for a new batch of people to hire we need we think of so many things how we can create a workplace that is of relevance to the current age people how can we create a, a workplace that can still have people from now all the gen z and you know to gen x now how can we do that what kind of tools can we introduce now as i said you know the the github and so on only software guys used to talk about now in hr project management she is talking about it the 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 scrum and the uh, uh, all the you know project agile project methodologies it's not no longer a software everybody the agility is expected anywhere okay that's how we are thinking you now as we welcome you students into the organization we are really thinking wanting to think ahead as you now not was said we don't want to look you no know, uh, outdated when you guys come in because we are also afraid to keep our jobs okay and we wanted to see then you know, tell that you no know, it was an embarrassing uh, embarrassing moment you now when we said uh, the computer all that we wanted to actually upgrade and give it to the employees to work from home and this employee said Sir, actually i don't want the office computer to be used i can use my personal device <laughs> and we said uh, uh, we were like i was really wanting to know why and i was amazed to see the configuration system that he had in his house was twice performance better than what we were giving in the office it was actually of course he had his own kind of a studio room for a developer he's a developer he had a studio room and with all this setup that took things are changing and we don't want to look bad in in you know in 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 your eyes that's how we change ourselves and the place that you are coming into 
as you know, uh, uh, I think it was Natwar and also Joshua mentioned about, it is not about where you're coming from, leave alone all the, you no, know, oh, I come from this background, no, I don't speak this and all that, it doesn't actually, no more, it was uh, all this sympathy worked little long ago, not now. Nobody cares about it. We wanted to look everybody equal. We wanted to give opportunities equal to people. That's how in the workplace, we are getting ready to receive people now from the management schools and also from the engineering schools. And uh, and also, you know, uh, I think few people talked about the communication. That's very important as students. I want to also talk about, uh, just to repeat what you know, Mr. Natwa said, also somebody else, said, Priya said, I think, uh, uh, when we say communication, we don't mean English. Okay, we don't mean English. Recently, we rejected a few candidates because they did not understand what the interviewer said clearly. They don't want to listen. They don't want to really, you know, we in our you know, interviewing panel, we challenge you know, uh, inter the interviewees, the people who come in, the candidates, to challenge the views of interviewer. That is how we evaluate communication. Oh, how will I, this person able to understand? How will this person is able to challenge the interviewer or the concepts or the ideas given by the interviewer or put in forth? That's how workplace is entirely changing. Workplace is changing. Workforce is changing. It is high time that we get, we know that I think this conclave kind of created a lot of light, throw a lot of light on how these things are changing. Good. Okay. Uh, I, I think we are actually time and uh, uh, I should probably should have asked before the participants, if you have any questions, probably you can type it here uh, as I, and I probably ask one question uh, to start with. And probably if you have any more questions, probably we can pick it up for within another five minutes or so, and we can conclude by 1245 or so. Okay. So uh, a question to Mr. Natwa. Uh, the, because the context here is the students and also the workplace, the, the freshest hiring that you're doing now, okay, how, what much of you know, mind shift you see in the learnability? The current people are learning, learnability is high or you now how much, so for example, are you still taking six months to bring in candidates and getting adopted to your workplace? Or is it less or is it more? Or in what way you are making your work environment conducive for that? Uh, very tough question because each of us, the context was actually very on this. I'm sure all of the panel members would have had a different experience to talk about it. I'll just stick to my experience. Uh, what we do, I'll, I'll more focus on what we actually do it. Uh, when we hire a candidate, uh, I mean, a student who is going to join with us, what we do is we do a pre-engagement program. Uh, let me tell you very clearly, Daniel, that the gone were the days where organization will invest on you once you come inside the organization. Mm -hmm. Like the moment you have joined the organization from day one, now I'm looking and longing on him that he will he will get trained, he will develop, he will he will you know engrave himself to the DNA. I think those were the days were gone. Today the students are fabulously smart. Uh, I think they the learnability I see is paradigmally high. I'm here comparing myself, what I was and uh, when I'm comparing today's student, I think everything is in the right place. Uh, all I don't see a couple of things is the mobility. I think, uh, you know, I've, I've done campus for ages now for, I, when I go and say a guy in the South, Hey, would you be able to comfortably take up a job in North? The first thing he says, there'll be no Italy dosa stay. So it will <laughs> be difficult. And, uh, but but let me be on the on the dot where I see a lot of panel members and students be very clear. Uh, I see a high amount of competent students in South, not in North. So I've been in Pan India. So when I see a student here is highly capable. The only thing missing here is the mobility. And the moment you come out of the mobility, I think you'll eat away the jobs of across India. I think that's which I wanted to be on record and say that. Uh, and point number two is that uh, I still see there is a gap in terms of organization because I don't blame students there. You know, every organization is unique with the culture. Today, having said, you have multiple generations coming into the organization and we have close to about 65% of millennials working with us as well. 
uh, but there's still there'll be a value which as an organization you will always have i mm-hmm. think that value and culture also need to be engraved in the uh, the future journey so what we actually do is we do a pre engagement program and let me well thin line i'll tell you we do about uh, 80 activities in that which is spend over about about 3 months and we actually do it only one thing is put them in the stress which each activity we put them in the stress i think couple of you do not agree when when there was a speaker don't take stress don't take stress mm-hmm. when i i didn't really mean that stress i put them in the melt and depression well that i mean to them i built a capability of fire fighting uh, this is something which very important you being a part of hyundian when i say that in our culture that when you come into the organization let me say you are doing a program you are all set for the program to shoot off and suddenly the rain comes and you are not able to do as a hyundian you cannot say that you are not ready for the plan b you should be able to execute the plan b in a matter of 10 minutes mm-hmm. even if it has taken 10 days for you to do a plan a mm-hmm. so uh, here it is today's what you need to be highly flexible speed and agile it's something which you need and that's where you know hyundai defines itself in 20 years reaching to the number second in india when it comes to automobile so today it just not with me it's with every organizations today that if you don't be agile we don't be speed aggressive flexible adaptable i think these are the few words which we really need to stress on as a student if you have the skills i think rest all can be built this is something which you need to be in tow with if you are in with that i think no organization is tough for you no job is tough for you everything will be an easy cake walk the only biggest step is is that what i always feel is the step which you take for yourself i think i think that if you do it 90% of job is done 10% will follow its own place i hope i have answered your question yep you answered my question very well and uh, uh, to sum up the uh, his answers agility is something that we expect in the org- workplace and without that is looked even before your because we don't want to spend one year in training you we expect you to come trained as no charles said now the interviews are gone we want you to pro- do a project and show to us the first question in jogo schools or in jogo recruitment what they ask us show me something what you've done if you say that you're good in drawing show me the things that you've drawn now if you say that you are no good creative in resume we put all this good jargons right creativity high on creativity and so on if you say high on creativity uh-huh. show me something that you created that is how in the organizations we are expecting because we ourselves working in now uka world where we do not know what is going to be next so we are in that front we are fighting and we want people who can join us in finding that way okay that's how it is going on and i don't see any questions on the comment box here and also it's time and i think it was a great uh, uh, discussion discussing yeah, uh, sir can i ask a question yes yeah. uh, this is ram kumar uh, faculty of obn hr from firebird institute of research and management uh, sir my direct question is uh, being a faculty who is teaching hr papers if i want to place my student at the end of the pgdm program in a topmost company as an executive hr so what are the top 3 uh, most uh, expected skill set you would list out and how we can inculcate those skill set in our curriculum and how we can deliver in a modern way that's what my direct question wow that needs one session to answer and uh, uh, probably i think many of our uh, uh, panelists today they covered this point in a, in a in a different ways okay what is expected and what is done and uh, is anybody in the panel members could can actually start uh, uh, can pick up this question i can start probably uh, uh, you can the two the first you know the faculty part of it okay if you are teaching an engineering student a teach more than a teacher an engineer is necessary a engineer whose intention who's wanting to teach is what is expected a teacher cannot just teach engineering right so that person should be in the same way a human resource professional a marketing professional just being a professor just not not just being a you no know, a teacher doesn't uh, help you need to be a hr in mind so that you can actually develop hr professionals uh, for the industry yes mr natwar i see you raising your hand in fact uh, uh, i just wanted to add on that i am vyas here uh, to professor ram kumar in fact a hr person should be a marketing person for some time 
you know he should he should know how to market his hr to his own area of doing it otherwise it's very difficult in my own days i know i'm as the oldest person among this team here uh, and i worked with uh, raja ji you know rajagopalachari as a pa for some time and uh, i was a very he was a very tough master you know I, afterwards i worked with uh, uh, one of the very big leading audit firm uh, varadaraj and is very tough masters i worked with tough masters you know today's program what we are talking about the gen, next gen and next uh, generation you know in 1965 we had a war you know we had a chinese war uh, we thought we are going to end end with that you know that the system was that nothing is going to happen because most of the people when are that age you know we you know today we are in pandemic we are uh, we are in the house we are we are forced to be in the house we are forced to be wherever we are there even we have to stick uh, stickers in the car uh, no lights are there so many things are there we are not allowed to work after 6 o'clock these things are there but some or other this was over we come across every pandemic whatever calamity comes to the world they will pass on slowly and there is a way to find it out like that's what you are doing it whereas Mm, the system what today uh, in in my you know I, i am i am i am connected to this group for so many years you know i am the first member of the group and uh, uh, i know the engineering students i know the uh, people uh, the other students also uh, engineering students uh, are a different way learned and uh, other commerce students are different way learned when you teaching a management for them so whoever it is whether hr students or analytical students i personally feel they should know a little to market themselves even in the question hour when you when hr question hour you say that creativity comes show they should show how to market them then show what they have done that it is very difficult if they don't they are not able to you know uh, uh, able to prove yourself themselves and uh, it is very difficult for them to get a job over there that is one thing secondly uh, uh, with uh, when i was uh, when i was listening to the i think so it's kavita she is asking about uh, firebird how the name itself was uh, uh something like that you know uh, this was this is this is a this is an institute probably uh, some of the some of the panel member may knowing it uh, this institute has started with a very good idea uh, you know when when there are some institutions are there in tiruchi iim and the koli kod iim and the Bang- bangalore iim there is no iim in coimbatore so we thought we we thought we we should have a curriculum of the iim so we had all the iim professors there in our academy in our academy that uh, in in our uh, academic council and those people designed the academy and the papers and that has been started like that so you if you see our uh, brochures and if you see our website you can see all those things so the system was very good but before we are taking it since we are in third year we had two calamities like corona and all this thing very first year we had very nice and second year you know again corona the third year also is con- coming you know it is very difficult you know getting student as well as the professors and up to date the curriculum is very good the place is very good you know we are we were our dream also very good you said you had to dream our dream also very good you know i am very happy to say that we got the very big award on the very first year itself uh, from the government of india national award it is a it is an award for the building you know it is almost uh, you know a copy of uh, you know we they 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 taken a, our own drawing and then i am trichy has built afterwards so so many things are there in our own plus point but again marketing wise you know we are we are in a place where in a you know third is quoted you know coimbatore is not that very good so many engineering college there are so many hospitals are there but it is again a challenge for us to take it little more forward so we thought of keep keeping so many because we are the banari group and we thought of keeping a name type kind of a banari or something like that so a group discussion happened in 2015 and then we should give a name it should be an international one so because we want to build a institution like an international one our own amphitheater has been designed by an international people our own do- even right our toilet has been designed by an international people our auditorium designed by the international people the wealth of international auditorium means how it should be like that so everything we took so much pain to uh, right from the building right from the as you said somebody was telling you should know tvs group the watchman they know the name we also know like that from the watchman the bo- policeman local man watchman the uh, line man everybody we know that but the time the presently said the generation time it is very difficult and uh, particularly the corona has come and the corona is taking a lot of time you know last year people were going out of the our college they said we are on corona students we are going out we corona batch we call them <laughs> they they were joking in that but they are all employed that's different but system what we created is very one person any company for that matter if they were doing it nicely they should have a excellent survey 
whatever they stood in their starting it excellent planning should analytics should be there and excellent planning should be there while planning if they have any doubt again go to the survey and again survey it again analytic it again plan it again before execution they can visit revisit revisit the planning revisit the survey the revisit the analytic any number of times once it is execution they should be in a very powerful because whenever we put a sugar factory we do all these things we say 300 days we should shoot a sugar for sugar factory you know at the time of bhumi puja there is a meeting there will be a time team people will be there team work will be there we will decide what is the next date for the inauguration the pandit will be there he will be on the panjang 30 he will say that this is the best day in 2000 so and so date we can have the uh, inaugural so you will have over 300 or 400 days in with you it is a limited days with you so you know that our supply chain management we should do operation management do should do everything we should plan such way it is purely a team work and somebody is saying we should be selfish i don't agree in that point we should be almost give everything to everybody because i may be wrong somewhere else the other part may be nice maybe if i keep my thought if i don't give my thought to somebody else i may be get corrected at any age so i always feel give everything to everybody so things will come from the other person also it's a behavior closeness suppose i take you every day for a coffee three four times you will also give me a one day bill sir i will give a bendai bill it's a behavior closeness from it, from a coffee shop it starts so it is it is a challenge for everybody so one should know whether it is hr student or whichever whichever uh, uh, area they belongs to they should know little marketing second thing whatever subject they are studying in the in the ug they should be thorough about it you know in the nunipul maya kuda somebody said they should go mr natwar was telling they should go deep 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 or tilak uh, was telling somebody was telling you know tilak uh, knows me well because he had come two three occasion to my university when i was there because i am right now in australia somewhere else i have been locked up here so you know that nunipul maya i mean the deep if you go deep into that and learn things without doubt very important second thing we should be always sincere to the boss finish the work happy with him satisfied with him you know i used to have a team even today in my college in my engineering institution in my sugar factory my colleague is my strength i have about my shiva taxian in banari i have about 370 colleagues they are my strength i joined as assistant manager in this company i am today the president of the company i am in the board today you can raise 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 to the level colleague is your strength so what i personally feel that you should share with your own colleagues whether senior or junior always make a team the team team building is very important and then share everything it can come out like so generation you know earlier it was 10 years a generation it's not 10 years now it become 5 years a generation because uh, every 5 years something is come because uh, some uh, new items are coming early 10 years 5 years back the artificial <laughs> intelligence were not there Uh, something will come in later you know my own professor i don't know the name about one year back i want to study artificial intelligence uh, please show me some place because it's coming up because i want to be up to date with that this is a situation they were telling oh, just my thought i wanted to put you on that thank you so much thank you thank you sir for your I think that's how the exact workplace is also you now when you have difference of opinion when you have people from different uh, um, uh, experience and background how do we come together and come to a conclusion no a firebird kind of institution also that it they are trained when they come yes actually uh, mr nitin and me want to add a word yes please over to you thank you thank you mr jacob so uh, what i wanted to add was uh, at the ground level in your college when you want to prepare students for uh, the workplace you could probably uh, start with all the additional points which are mentioned in the chat i agree with all of them you should give them probably uh, multitasking activities how do they multitask between different uh, project activities and give them ownership and accountability for certain um, you know for the for whatever work they are leading and another thing is build their storytelling skills end of the day we have to learn how to paint a picture of whatever concept you want to sell whatever idea whatever project you are want you want to sell and most of it uh, in today's world starts with data so give them data uh, and ask them to analyze and come up with a story of what the data is saying because data analysis is a very important skill and i think uh, even in the upcoming um, 
you know, like we're going to start uh, testing people on how good they are in HR analytics. There are so many HR analytics courses. Uh, give them not just within one department. They should be able to understand what numbers are saying from the recruitment standpoint, from the compensation standpoint, from talent management standpoint. So the same data, how can I view it from 360 degrees? I think that's the very important skill that you can groom them because otherwise once they uh, join the workplace, they will probably start off in one small department and then they will not have that big picture. Having the big picture is very, very important. Thank you. Good, thank you. That I just have something to say, um, Daniel. Uh, yes. I I beg to differ a little with the question itself because the question speaks about top organizations. So, <laughs> right, it's very important to first teach or you know encourage our students to accept any size of an organization. The first thing is they have to take pride of their job. And most importantly, the pride in which they, in the organization that they're working with. Remember, when they go as a HR to an organization, irrespective of the size of the organization, talent acquisition is a key role. Until they take pride in their organization, irrespective of the size of large, small, and you know, medium industry, they will not be able to attract talent. They will not be able to convince talents to their brands. Second thing is they'll not be able to retain their talents to another organization, which is bigger than theirs. So it's very important that we do not go with the top organizations, Taiwan organizations, irrespective of the size of the organizations, groom your students to take pride in their job and role rather than the size of the organization. I've worked with companies like, you know, HCLs of the world, Sutherland, CSS Corp, which is all, you know, headed their talent managements and all that. But, but one thing that I can assure, I started moving to smaller organizations and started developing organizations which are as small as about you know 40 50 people growing them to about you know 500 people and then i switch on within a, a matter of about three or four years i switch on to another organization not that i don't want to stay in an organization after beyond you know four years or five years but the stint here is very clear the pride that you take in building everything together along collaboratively along with everyone so please do not groom your students for a tire one or you know a high salary package Remember, it's the love and the passion that you have for the role and the organization. Otherwise, you will not be able to survive. So if this goes into the mind of our faculties first, that will automatically, you know, flow into the mind of, uh, you know, the students too. The other skills are all very common. It's all already discussed well in advance with all of us. Thank you. Very well said. Very well said. Okay. Uh, Daniel, brother, can I add from placement perspective or am I interrupting network here? Network, can I? Yeah. He gives uh, a thumbs up. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> great. Okay, I think I have all the rights to interfere here because I moved from HR. Uh, I mean, I started my career as an HR person, then moved into academics, and then again uh, to another platform here. Yes, as Priyadarshani rightly pointed out, I started my profile as a recruiter first, not even a talent acquisition guy, a basic recruiter where I had an opportunity to browse through the, all the various services of recruitment and find the profiles. I was uh, working in recruitment. So now here, let me go with one by one, uh, Ram, you can make a note of it. Uh, Professor Ram Kumar, you can make a note of it. One, sure. please go back to your fundamentals of HR. What are the fundamentals? Let your kids aware of the fundamental knowledge of HR, recruitment, training, and perspective, whatever it is. Go with one standard textbook, of international uh, repute and one standard textbook of national repute. I hope you would be uh, remembering Dr. T.V. Rao. Actually, I was uh, having a conversation with Dr. T.V. Rao whether he can inaugurate this event. Uh, unfortunately, he couldn't. I was sharing this with Duke and it was a surprise for, I thought it would be a surprising element for uh, Daniel and uh, Charles, but uh, that didn't happen. Maybe next time we'll bring in the father of HRM in India, Dr. T.V. Rao. Now, next one, please make your students to go through the practical aspect of it. When they say recruitment, let them go through the process of recruitment. What is selection? How do you find the selection process? Let them work on practically, maybe a three weeks internship or four weeks internship or a part-time uh, opportunities available right on now. There are plenty of work from home or work from college internships are available, especially in recruitment, I'm telling you. The same way with training, the same way with uh, competition management, the same way with your payroll softwares. 
let them be aware of the latest tools and software available for each and every aspect of it. If you look at uh, payroll software, there are plenty. Again, we have our Charles uh, from Zogo is here. Zogo has plenty of software available. You can uh, look, look into that and make people get trained in those kind of softwares while they are in college. The third point, <clears throat> they should do a proper and a genuine project in their field when they are in college itself. As uh, many speakers have told uh, in the beginning that whatever you have written, creative skill thinking, they, they should have the uh, ability to show that. The same way when they do a project, when do they say specialization in HR, they should do a project in HR in a real company. When I say real company, understand it. No more gimmicks in that particular area. Please make them do a project in real company. These are the three major points. The fourth one, uh, I think Natwar has uh, listed so many things. I don't want to get into whatever Natwar has uh, mentioned here. So let uh, Natwar uh, take it from here. Natwar, your time has started now. I think you have made lots of comments in the comments box. Natwar? Uh, firstly, I think uh, we are overshooting the time, Daniel. So uh, I'll keep it short. I know Daniel's concern is and uh, the, the student per se. I, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll just stick to start. Two things, faculties. Uh, faculties are, are not godfathers. So you please need to yourself to learn and learn and keep learning. And that's very important. Why student has to go to various companies and do internship. It's time for faculties to go and understand how the organizations have changed the practices and how they're changing. If you are not relevant, how can you make the students relevant? And if you stay relevant, I think uh, your products will be more of a campus ready product. So I think that's where you uh, address the gap to the what organization are concerned for. Point number two is the students. Uh, students, you are when you are postgraduate, you are not a student. I think you will have to come out of it. You are on a verge of where you will either start a professional career or either starting up a business. Please understand, post graduation is just not about doing uh, getting in a job. It's all about starting a business. I think as an as an institute, please uh, focus to uh, building an entrepreneurs as well. If we don't have entrepreneurs like the how the Zoho was built, then you know it's like. We all have a capability. I'm sure Charles and Daniel would add a lot of value, and especially Charles would add a lot of value to it. Entrepreneurship is all with us. I think you'll have to just refocus yourself. So coming back to it as an as a stu as a professional or a student, which you are into, please understand how micro and macro economic factors are going to change. Because end of the day, HR is all about business. If you're not contributing to the business, and let me say you're out of the context and you're dead wood. So please understand that every small thing, and I'm, I keep stressing that, please read the Economic Times and try and study the how the economic factors are impacting business and how the business impacting people strategy and how this will change your overall practice. So business as element is important. I still see student attending HR conference, not business conference. And I think time has come. If you don't feel you're not part of a business, then always will remain to be a personal manager. You are a business partner. It's important that you think and act like a business. I think that's all from me. Thank you. Fantastic. Fantastic. I think it was a great summary. Uh, very well said. Starting from you know, Nityanandani, the point that she said was Nityanandani, data-driven storytelling skills. Absolutely delight. It is the world that we need to tell stories, but data-backed. Absolutely correct. And now how Priyadarshini said, teaching them to take pride in what they do, not just because of some logo. Okay, that is very important. If the logo is adding value to them, that is not the right way. They should be adding value to the logos. That is how we are. Now we here take a lot of pride in carrying our own. See, Charles is having his own brand logo on his shirt. That's a pride for both sides. It's not one side. That's how you train your people. Otherwise, it'll that will only get into the head and it will not be useful for anybody. Okay. And the points that no Ramesh Bro said, and finally beautifully concluded by uh, Natwa. We are expecting professionals who will come and help us solve the business problems. We are not hiring people. We are not in charity to give people employment. We are here to run a business and to make sure that the clients are satisfied. Okay. And we can still do in our, you know, however, we, finally, we wanted to see how the community as a company is, you no, know, is progressing in what way we are adding value, how the community is larger. Also HR lens, we initiated to make sure that we are able to create impact in the community longer where we 
or working in different organization. All the panels here, panel members here are working in some organization. But we as a community want to come together and create impact in bigger community. We are trying to provide solution for the problem. We are trying to create uh, awareness in the people's mind, students' mind, so that they will be become solution creators. That's how now even this uh, conclave was planned and very well executed. Thank you, Firebird, for making it you now work beautifully and uh, now uh, executed. Thank you so much. Over to you, Mr. Jyotirao. Uh, it's been a pleasure. In fact, uh, Mr. Daniel, uh, all the panelists were incredible. In fact, uh, listening to Mr. Nakwar uh, and uh, even no, like uh, from the panel one, Nitin Adhani has been, had been very kind enough to come and give her views also. And uh, it was literally you know, awesome to listen to uh, uh, Priyadashini Madam and Mr. Ramesh Aditya with all their points were you know, so literally mind-boggling, thought-provoking, whatever you call it. So thank you so much. So much of value has come out of uh, this particular thing. And uh, to give a, uh, like, uh, a closing remark, from our own institute, uh, we would love to have our Dean Student Empowerment and Granting, Dr. Chetan Bajaj, to please come over and take stage, please. Good afternoon. Am I visible and audible? Yes, sir. Yeah. So this was, this was a great session. And then how to summarize or concluding. So I go back to childhood. And I say I heard the story of something like Alice in Wonderland. When we are very small, we heard that. Grew up with that. Then came the story of Rip Van Winkle. Rip Van Winkle story said that uh, the guy slept for 20 years. Then he went back to the city of London and it was totally changed. But now today's word, who is this Rip Van Winkle? Every day it is Alice in Wonderland. Every day the world is changing. So this is welcome to this world. And that is what these two panels, fantastic panels led by Charles and the Daniels, they took us to this world. Now, what is this workplace and what is this workforce? Now, from what we look at, this workplace is virtual and it's global. So it could be that I, you never know, I may be sitting in Germany or I may be sitting on the Bahamas or I may be on the Antarctica. I may as well be on the moon tomorrow. So this is the workplace where I am, nobody knows. What is the workforce? Nobody knows. Uh, some of us could be a American. Some of us could be a Australian. Some of us could be a rural Indian from a village in Bihar. And on this panel, whichever way we introduce, but we really don't know who was there from where. And some of us could also have been a robot. So we may be talking to a robot or to an artificial intelligence. So now this is the workforce and this is the workplace. Artificial intelligence, robo, or a man from moon, alien, whom we are talking to, where we are talking to, we really don't know. And now the students, students enter this work, Alice in Wonderland. Now what will this Alice in Wonderland be like? After five years, there will be 80% of the jobs which are not there today, which don't even exist today. 10 years, 15 years. Now, what will be their careers? They will not talk in terms of jobs or uh, workplaces. They will talk that I changed eight careers. I made 10 careers. So this is the type of world in which they are entering. So what will be the key? The key will be that sort of learning and unlearning which we have been talking about. Uh, and then we talk about this movie, Ghazni. Every 10 minutes, that person forgets who his identity is, maybe 20 minutes. And then he learns something totally different. But one thing he keeps in mind is passion, his mission. So that remains same, but everything else is changing. So that is the book that we were talking about. And that is uh, what uh, these panels were discussing. And some very interesting things. So Mr. Nutwar, so he's saying that one person on the railway track is just a worker and another is the CEO, the MD of the company. And both were friends and started together. A stone cutter who sees his work as cutting stone and another who is seeing that he is building a castle. So such interesting thing. And that shooter, that shooter who reinvented himself with his left hand, he hit the bullseye. This is the type of people we are looking for. Then we looked at uh, Mr. Daniel C. said, wonderful, this is not written. 
you show me what you can do. so in 3 hours i want to know if you can learn coding skills through some different tool so i want to know your learning skill i am not even interested in what you know but what you can learn and in 3 hours you show me that so this is the type of world we are entering into so very interesting uh, mr ramesh was saying task bound who is bothered about time today give me a performance give me an outcome so this is what and very interesting storytelling storytelling is you create your story and tell it in a unique way mr shivraj high order thinking skills now uh, in this high order thinking skills means that thinking skills itself will change when we enter this alice in wonderland every year there is a new job every five years there is a new career so all this was very very interesting as we looked at it and say priya darshini she was talking of creative minds everybody is a scientist we don't say that i am a hr guy i am a marketing guy yes i am omniscient i am a scientist i am an entrepreneur i create i change the world and every minute if i don't change the world somebody else will do it. so this is what i am so very very interesting session on the whole and uh, absolutely a delight to listen to all this and then people talking about not uh, footprints but about digital prints so we had a very interesting so talk about from mr joshua the students students are not learning what was there in the past but learning what they will create in the future the digital prints they are not their footprints but the digital prints so what digital prints they create what type of a new world they create how fast they unlearn and learn and this is the highlight of today's two panels absolutely amazed absolutely a wonderful time and thanks everybody in fact everybody from mr shivraj mr kavita to mr daniel natwar everybody it was a fantastic job thank you uh, so much professor i think that was uh, truly well rounded and you had a given a uh, really you know a very very fruitful closing remark for this wonderfully done uh, workshop which is on the work virtual platform and uh, just to remind uh, in the panel one uh, session uh, like uh, the moderator mr charles gordon had mentioned at least every business school should have at least a 50 50% model where in 50% of theoretical engagement and 50% of practical engagement and we are uh, very proud to say in fiber we now follow a 70 30 concept here where in 70% of the entire day's engagement will be on practical mode and really engaging with the industry and only 30% of theoretical engagement that is what we are moving on uh, first of its kind uh, that's being followed here so thank you so, so much uh, to professor chetan bajaj and all uh, the panelists and the moderators we need to really thank you so much for being here and for this uh, pleasant duty i call upon uh, dr ram kumar faculty of hr to please uh, propose the word of thanks yeah thank you uh, sir and uh, adding to the point uh, i mean what professor jyoti said uh, fireboard has a unique culture in uh, developing a quality curriculum so one important thing why i am telling this now because whatever you mentioned for example ramesh sir uh, he mentioned three important things fundamental this academic rigor then second one practical learning in terms of internship projects and all third one project in a real company so uh, we have a keen interest and we ensure that students are having all these three aspects uh, for example for every course not just overall curriculum for every course 20 or 30 hour course we used to have a course vetting process with the industry expert as well as academic expert so based on their suggestions we used to make changes even after developing the course and not only that as uh, even network cut i said uh, we are including uh, uh, even faculty members in this 70 30 model we are sending faculty members to the industry to write cases and i am happy to say that uh, just now our hr department has completed a case study along with the uh, uh, professor mr tilak uh, from lnt so like that we have industry engagement in terms of case study writing and consultancy projects research projects uh, even for small small uh, projects so uh, firebird is very much uh, serious in ensuring the quality as you said so it's 70 30 model 30% is academic rigor and 70% is industry exposure so with that note i would like to thank all the hr experts who have contributed to this uh, uh, conclave uh, especially uh, mr uh, Daniel Jacob and uh, Mr Charles Godwin who moderated the two different panels 
and the members of the panel, Mr. Tilak from LNT Defense, uh, Ms. Nitya Nandini from DXC Technologies, uh, Joshua David from Hexava Technologies, Ms. Kavita from Amphenol, uh, Mr. Shivraj from Medianet, and the members of the second panel, uh, Natur Kadel from Hyundai Motors, Priyadarshini from Puda, and Mr. Ramesh Aditya uh, Shankar AIS Academy. So I thank all the HR experts who contributed for this uh, conclave and you made us to think, rethink about the skill set, what we need to import in our students. And also, uh, yeah, I would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to the uh, uh, management who supported us and who actually they are the instrument behind us. Uh, they are the one called uh, CDC department and they're asking, uh, I mean, why can't you conduct this kind of program so that we will improve our network uh, with the industry. So a heartfelt thank to the management, Dr. Sundar Raman, sir, the managing trustee, um, Sujana Abirami, who's an honorable trustee member, and also our uh, honorable director, ma'am, Dr. Prema Shankaran, who always supporting us in terms of I mean, assisting, uh, I mean, ensuring that the uh, I mean, resources are in place. And Dean, uh, Student Empowerment and uh, uh, Branding, uh, Professor Chetan Bajar. And very important thing, a key person uh, behind the show, uh, Mr. Duke Makdal Eliazer, uh, who is the uh, manager of placements of Firebird and uh, Mr. Jyoti Ramalingam, who is the master of ceremony of this program, who is moderating very well. And not only that, our, each and every faculty members, including program coordinator and all the faculty uh, heads of different uh, I mean, electives. And uh, not, uh, I mean, uh, uh, it is not least our students uh, who are always supporting uh, in conducting all these programs and also they are taking part. So now our students are running different uh, projects in terms of, of course, these projects are going to come up as companies. So uh, everything is possible because only one thing is very important. We are getting 100% cooperation from our students. So I really thank our students who, is always, who are always supporting us. So yeah, uh, thank you all. Thanks for your presence and made this program very much successful. Thank you. So truly humbling indeed to have all these fabulous people on board. And uh, once again, uh, a deep sense of gratitude to each and every one present here, all the students and uh, our president also from Australia has participated. And uh, each and every one of you in whatever way you made a difference here, it is definitely going to uh, you know, resonate well uh, with all the participants and they're definitely going to take a lot of value out of it. Uh, once again, we look forward to meeting each and every one of you physically uh, at Firebird also at some point of time, looking forward to it and uh, having a more, uh, you know, like a ple pleasurable engagement with all of you. Thank you all from Firebird. Looking forward to meet again. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you, sir. Thank you. Let's thanks, uh, Duke. Thank uh, thanks, Dr. Ma'am. It's a good show. Uh, thanks. I hope uh, the messages have reached uh, the audience. Thanks uh, to all the placement officers who have joined from other colleges. I could see people from Jaipur, people from Hyderabad, people from uh, other states also have joined today. Thank you so much, uh, gentlemen and ladies, uh, for joining us today. Thanks, uh, Daniel Bro and uh, Charles Garvin Bro for moderating these wonderful sessions. And uh, excellent. Thank you so much for Jodi, sir, being uh, joining us and uh, doing this uh, MC and uh, Ram Kumar, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. And I will not thank Duke because it's Duke's responsibility to conduct this event <laughs> again and again. So, Duke, get ready for the other event, next event immediately. We'll make it, sir. We'll rock. Thank you, sir. Thank yes. you, Daniel. Thanks, sir. madam. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Great moderation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Let us sign off. Thank you, sir. Charles, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Pleasure. Thank you, Daniel, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.